uh, I think this is a great place for us to start. Hello, folks. Welcome to Gary Con. Uh, we are Dork Tales with a special guest today, and we're going to be doing a Dungeons and Dragons actual play for you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, if you like what we do here, you can always check us out over on our own channel, twitch.tv or youtube.com slash Dork Tales, uh, where we tell all sorts of narratives, including Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Powered by the Apocalypse, World of Darkness, Chronicles of Darkness, Trinity, basically everything. Um, and uh, we're normally a completely costumed and soundtracked and backgrounded and fancy stuffed stream. Uh, but today is a convention day game, which, except for Cal down there, who is just going so hard, it's not even funny. Um, Cal so, always brings uh, the we, A game. Always bringing the A game, uh, which is funny because you're Canadian, so it's always the A game in one way or another. Ooh. Ooh. I love it. I love All it. All right. Uh, so, um, we had a little bit of tech problems, so sorry for the delay, and uh, very excited to be playing with you all today. I'm your dungeon master for the... Um, blah, blah, blah. I'm your dungeon master for the day. My name's Kelly. I use he and him as my pronouns, and I am very happy to be here. Um, you can find me over at Dork Tales, where I'm the most prominent host. I can also be found on Storyteller's Vault and on some Onyx Path publications if you'd like to read some role-playing games that I helped write. Um, let's go in a big circle, say hello, and then let's start this adventure. Let's start with Amy. It's me. Hello, you. I am yeah. Amy. I use she, her, they, them pronouns, and I am playing um, Luella Von Zarevich, the uh, stepdaughter slash adopted daughter of Strahd Von Zarevich, the warlock, who is now uh, a dampier and not just an elf. And uh, you can find me on Twitch at um, Paradoxical, Paradoxical Ghoul and also on Dork Tales very regularly. I am always there. Basically live there. It's nice. I basically live there. Yeah. Uh, all right. Over to Chris. Oh, that's me. That's uh, hi, I'm uh, Chris. Uh, I'm Diggy Blog in the chat. Um, you can find me on Dork Tales, and sometimes I make an exclusive appearance on Dork Tales. Uh, I might be on other social media, but I don't really do much with it. I'm only there for the memes. And uh, today I will be playing a young Shatterkai elf rogue. Nice. All right, down to Millie. Sorry, I was secretly listening to stream at the same time to check to see if we were audible in both ears or not. I think we are. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Millie and or Bunny Hearted. My, my pronouns are she and her or they and them. Uh, and you can catch me over here on Doortales as well as over on my own channel where I am a cozy, comfy, retro styled bunny VTuber to the surprise of probably not a lot of people as I'm here cleverly disguised as Tuxedo Mask. <gasps> I, I I'm very excited for this game. I'm playing a ridiculous bard with the poisoner feet. This is going to be a mess, and we're all going to explode. I cannot wait. Nice. All right, and finally, um, actually, no, I got two more. I was looking at a technical thing. Um, all right, over to Cal. Hello, my name is Cal. I use he/him pronouns, and I am being a Skellington cleric today. Where can we find you, excited. Skellington Cal? <laughs> Nowhere! Um, <laughs> definitely no, not on your podcast. Callington. Callington. Uh, Callington. Callington. <laughs> Callington oh Merrill. Um, Callington. Yeah, I, I do pod, the podcasting sometimes. Uh, Lasercomb Productions, uh, where I talk mostly about cartoons from the 90s. So, you know, there's some crossover with what's going on here. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter at NeoCal, N-E-O underscore K-A-L. And I, I'm getting into TikTok too, so. Don't. I, Don't. I have an important question. Um, as a cartoon from the 90s, should I be concerned? Yes. Are you? What What year did it premiere? I could be anyone. I'm definitely not here. I am the dashing bun of the night, tuxedo bun, and you never met me before. I'll see you later. Never heard of you. Thanks for all of your hard work, Tuxedo. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you did. Um, I didn't do I, I provided moral support. Moral support, all right? That's all you need. That's all you need. I believe you in you, and I get anything. kidnapped every episode. Let's go. All right. Uh, Cal, good to have you. And last but not least, our special guest for the day, Monica. Hey, Monica. Hello. My name is Monica. That's it. There's no other name. Right. Um, no, I'm just kidding. My name is Monica Valentinelli. You can find me at Books of M online. And I'm not on the socials as much these days, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I am playing a chief. Oh no, the tech hunter, issues have returned. And her name is Ismina. Good to have you here. So, because we're a couple minutes late, I think that we might as well just hop into game and have some fun. So. You are all, the original premise for this game was that you were all kind of working as part of a package delivery company akin to like a Futurama, like a Planet Express. Uh, however, 
Um, you all ended up being really gothy characters, so I don't know. I guess you're going to be working for... Um, well, I was going to have you working for Fayax, but I guess we'll have you working for the Underworld Postal Service. Um, because why not? Or the Infernal po Imps? Underworld Mailing Parcel Service. Imps. We'll have you working for Imps. Okay. Uh, so, your mission for the day is that you have been given a scroll to deliver to the Great Gem Worm. Argo Snacks. Argo Snacks is a, a gem dragon of incredible power. At least that's what the legends say. For no one has seen him in, oh, more than a hundred years. And with that, this message that you've been given in a sealed scroll case that should only be opened in Argo Snacks' presence is of the utmost importance that you bring it to him. You are being paid post-delivery because you have bad contracts and have been set to uh, find a way into his mountain home and deliver this. Following a number of clues, minor adventures that have led you across the land, through the deserts, under the sea, um, where everything was better down where it was wetter, but now you're back up top and are finding your way there at the base of the mountain. So as you are there, there is an immense craggy mountain in front of you uh, with a winding dirt trail leading up to it. Not a speck of civilization within about five miles of this mountain as the landscape is serene enough bits of grass and bits of bits of trees and and so on but mostly just these outcroppings of clear and purple and blue crystals um very sharp very valueless might be cute in jewelry but that's about it it's very costume jewelry gem stones uh and it is at that point where you are walking down the road toward this mountain uh, why don't we go ahead and describe our characters real quick, uh, starting, we'll go in reverse order, uh, and start with, uh, Ismena. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> oh, um, can you describe your character for everybody as you're walking down the road toward the mountain? Um... My character is not wearing the typical Infernal Services Postal Service uniform. Um, she is dressed all in black. She's got white hair and red eyes and has red horns and is looks very disgruntled and like like she took this job because she needs the money. Right, Fair. like this isn't a normal, normal gig. Yeah, student, um, student but loans. But, but you know, I was thinking maybe, maybe there's some other kind of goal that can come out of this. Fair. All right, uh, Jack. What do you look like? Uh, Jack is a very broad, uh, shoulder-bladed uh, cleric. Um, and I don't have it up now. And I, Cressius, the cleric of Cressius, who serves undeath. Um, but he's all about the rules. He's all about fair play. Mm. Uh, he believes in individualism and keeping keeping one's word. And uh, um, his uh, search for the um, truth in, in love and death and taxes has brought him here, them here. And, um, yeah, for whatever reason, his, his undead God, um, needed him to, to do this. You gotta spread the and word. so he's going to make sure it gets done no matter what and keep everyone in line or Thanks. else. Okay. Uh, what does Bramble look like? Uh, well, Bramble is a herring gone, unsurprisingly, uh, dressed very much in a fancy swanky tuxedo as much as can fit over the, the Benui form, um, and generally looks like a complete goober. Basically me with more more bunny style features, 100% has a dramatic red cloak. Um, and I guess should we decide if the slime on my head is in the game or just happens to be here aesthetically? Yeah, it can be your, it can be your companion. 
Sure, sounds good. And Blorp is here and dressed up too, very dramatically. Um, I feel like Bramble is here for Jacob because, like, there, there's a like hundred year old dragon who has the word snack in their name, and the, the, you're you're looking for love, so we we got to get you connected here. It's Jack, not Jacob. Yes. All right. What does uh, Senathan look like? Uh, Senathan is a young uh Shadokai elf very pale uh white hair um like young i say young but uh, uh that's like maybe late 60s early 70s kind of range you think so quite young for uh, an elf and uh um looks kind of like a scrawny teenager who ran away from home um he's except for he's got this weird beard which is quite strange for, for an elf to have um but otherwise uh quite uh quite lean and uh, dressed in kind of dark clothing and rags and is generally has a very down and depressed demeanor. Okay. But you do have a beard, which is very weird for an elf. Curious. Mm -hmm. All right. And finally, what does Luella look like, Amy? So Luella is about oh, five, five with like, like long platinum blonde hair and a very, very, very pale complexion and is not even remotely wearing the uniform that's expected. She hates it here. This is awful. She doesn't even know why she's here. She's probably like grounded or something. Oh my God, this is awful. Um, Go on and see the and, world, blah, uh, says Strzok. But Papa. Um, <laughs> and so Don't make me speak yeah. twice. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So very pale. Um, just like think, um, like Mean Girls meets like the Scream Queens main care, like some of the characters from Scream Queens meets like I don't know Draco Malfoy. Yeah, All right. that kind Sounds of vibe. Good. All right. Uh, so this party is walking down the road, and as they are, the the sky is quite a bright brilliant blue it's very sunny very much the opposite of most of your general preferences and like i said there's not much to do around this mountain but as you are wandering toward it about a half mile out you are going to notice that there is a wagon coming toward you an old orc is sitting astride um astride the 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 driver's seat up top pulling a bunch of these pretty valueless gemstones looks like probably being made for costume jewelry or something uh and the cart's being driven by a pair of oxen as he's kind of like clopping by. He's got a big straw hat and is uh, sucking on a piece of, uh, of long grass out of the side of his mouth. And he's kind of just like heading toward you, past you on the road. How much for that horse? Just run! Well, Feel I mean... That. What do you got? Favor, a couple gold, strong hand. A couple hand. of gold. Bessie's an old friend, and I wouldn't give her away for anything less than ten gold pieces. I didn't say anything about her away. Maybe we can, you know, rent her. Hmm. Well. Make me a persuasion roll. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How is this guy gonna move his car without the horse? He's he's got two. He's got two. It's got two. Okay, right, right, right. It's gonna be late to his cheap gem delivery. Goodness. This is how we're undercutting the delivery competition. Uh that would be an eighteen. Oh, eighteen. Alright. Well it's a con game, so let's have fun with this. Uh well I've never met you before, stranger. And you're obviously tainted with infernal taint given your tiefling heritage. But, ten bucks is ten that's bucks. Well, that's really rude. I'm sorry, I'm in sensitivity training. Look, one of my daughters is married to a tiefling. It's, it's, I'm, I'm not racist. <laughs> okay, uh, ten, ten, ten gold sounds reasonable. I'm sure you have lots of tiefling friends, too. I, yeah, I, I love their music. Wow. And tiefling food is a little spicy for me, I'm not going to lie. But, I believe this guy. Well, I, wow. But I, 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 I can't even. 
Look, guys, I just, look, I'm a product of my time. I think that's what everyone says. I'm 500 years older than you, and you don't hear me be saying the same thing. Does anyone happen to have magic missile? Because I would like to hear this man go boom. Er, er. Huh? Well, I'm, I'm just that a quaint villager. No, but I do have Eldritch Blast. Huh? We could but take we the heart. did pay him, and we did get the horse, so we have signed a contract here. You, you haven't done we either of those things. Okay, Phil, whatever. I'm an Eldritch Blast him. <laughs> <laughs> Make me an attack roll. <laughs> Woo. Whoops. Here we go. Murder Hobo Express. Murder Hobo Express. Whoop, whoop. This is the first time she's been out of the house in like 10 years. Oh, fuck. Uh, it's a, Eldritch Blast is a ranged spell it's attack, right? It's a ranged right? spell attack, and do you have two bolts at your level? Yeah. So, let's say 13. Yep, that's a hit. If I'm doing a second one, then that's also definitely a hit because I definitely rolled Roll higher me damage. than that. Let's do it. Uh, I need to pull up uh, Eldritch Blast's damage one second. Uh, 1D10. I didn't think I was going to do this. Is it 1d10? 1d10, and I believe you have the... Um, I do have Agonizing Blast. So, yeah, 1d10 Wait, plus Charisma it. twice. Is that to each blast? Yep, okay. Yep. So, two blood bolts, so 2d10 yeah, well plus... I grounded again. Oh, crap. No, that was uh, balls funny. Uh, uh, uh. Because <laughs> Strahd sounds like Adam Sandler in my mind. Uh, 17, I believe. Okay. All right. That's so, nice. That's uh, nice. Luella, how do you do this? So, like, reaching out, summoning your arcane powers to bear. What happens? I think she just puts her hand up and snaps and, like, it, like zaps out of her finger. Okay. It's like pew pew. Okay, so there's oh, going to be good. an explosion, and this orc is going to go flying and hits the ground, singed with arcane energy, and with his last breath, he will say, I was just here for exposition! And he's going to die. <laughs> now, why did you do that? He didn't even exposite. Did you just. But what he exposed was pretty terrible. Luella, we're going to get sued. Again. Well, at least we have some horses now. This is going we well. We have two. It's true, yeah, I suppose. Uh, and if we knock out all of these cheap gems, and uh, Jack is going to just shake out the, <laughs> the cart, we can all fit in. <laughs> okay, so the cart will be left of its gemmy debris. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you have you have a cart and a pair a pair of uh, a pair of Clydesdales, we'll say. Awesome. So let's go up the mountain with the horses. At least we don't have to walk. That's right. <sighs> Ultimately, that was the greatest evil. No, okay. I think that's typically murder. I mean. Was it? I though? guess it depends. You know, we we can discuss the ethics of the circumstances on the road. Jack, on the this card. is truth. This is truth. It was self-defense. This is the truth you're looking for. <laughs> no, I really like this one. You know how I think. All right. So, um. Well, I mean, at least we're not down any money. Though that was kind of rude. I know. I'll do speak with Dead at some point later or summon the ghost and apologize for the immediacy of it. Usually I should give him uh, wait. I know. Perhaps he can still make his delivery. And <laughs> I'm going to raise the raise the guy. As a servant. Exposition! <laughs> That's right! We didn't get your name! Um. Uh. Uh. Irving Montrose Deadman. Ah, well, Mr. Deadman. Welcome to the team. It's quite a coincidence. 
It is quite the coincidence. You've been looking over your shoulder for decades, I imagine. Mostly because of paternity suits. Oh, wow, you're just like the worst. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna, gonna shrug. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I know I'm supposed to feel bad about this, but I just don't feel bad about this. Is that bad? I don't think it I is mean, in this case. I'm we feeling like you should feel less, anyway. less bad the more he speaks. Ah, uh, his tongue will stop working in a few minutes. What? Why would it? And his tongue's just going to fall out of his mouth. Mm. Oh, faster than usual. Mice didn't even get it. Weird. Uh, as if on command, one of the mice from <laughs> uh, from Jack Marrow's armor is going to... Squeak, squeak, squeak. And he's just going to like grab the tongue and pull it inside the armor. Oh, oh, well, that sure is gross. Ah, Patches, feeding the new family. Oh, is Patches a parent? Oh, my, congratulations, Patches. Aw, so cute. Don't have to uh, eat their babies anymore. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, I'm a little, a little hatch inside of Jack's armor is going to open, and a mouse is going to lean out and hand each of you a cigar. <laughs> no, thank you. Okay. It's a mouse-sized cigar. So it's it's really like very small. I I'll pick it up and take, accidentally break it. I take it. the mouse sized cigar to my horns and mm. light it on fire. Nice. And it so is it is quality it, it's rat tobacco, so you know, definitely a little <laughs> little highbrow for a mouse. Uh potent. Very potent for a mouse. For a tiefling it's it's not much. I think Bramble's just gonna eat it. How? It's about the size of like a piece of checks mix, so like, you know. Yeah, may as well. All right, crunch, crunch, crunch. Um, okay, so uh, now that you have a a slowly rotting old orc with you uh, traveling up the hill, um, you are going to be able to make pretty good time with an unladen horse cart. Uh, are you having him tag along with you, Cal? He's the he's the he's the coach. <laughs> he's. he's <laughs> <laughs> All right. Before long, you're going to reach the top of the mountain. And as you do, there is going to be just kind of like up on this plateau before the mountain peak. There's a winding trail that leads up there. But then there's an old temple. Now, this temple is probably... 500 years old. It's in ruins at this point. The roof of the temple has collapsed and already been pulled away by um, by probably locals that are using the marble for whatever, you know, bathroom refinishing or, you know, marbles. I don't know what, what people use for marble in, in this era. Uh, but there are still a number of columns that are half sticking up, kind of like the Pantheon. Um, and as you approach this, it's this huge huge platform that was once a major temple, about 150 feet deep by about 60 feet wide. And um, yes, as you approach it, what do you do? Do you look around? It it ends in the side of the mountain, kind of pressed right up against it. And as you look around, you can see that there are a pair of statues flanking what would normally be a secret door, but due to weather conditions and erosion is obviously a different color than the rest of the stone and kind of sticking out. Mm. Right. So keep an eye on the statues. From my experience, statues in old ruins are often traps. Just just saying, just putting that understandable, out there. Understandable, understandable. And from my experience, Jack, when you approach a worm or a dragon with romantic intent, the best approach is to give them a flower and tell you tell, tell them how pretty their eyes are and how attractive their hoard is. Really, we're we're gonna we're gonna get this working for you. Who has the, the right scroll? worm is out there for you? Who has the scroll? Who has the Jack. scroll? <laughs> oh, I say Jack. never mind. All right. <laughs> <laughs> ah, why do you do that? Because I can. <laughs> All right. Um, go ahead and roll Arcana, Monica, if you're looking around. I am. I am, okay. looking, I am doing many different lookings, and I have advantage on Arcana. Ooh, nice. Nice. So that first one is 21. Yep, that'll do it. 21. 
21. All right, looking around, you can see that this was once probably some type of, maybe not a holy site, but a site that was venerating the dragon. There are a number of places here where you can see that there used to be like arcane artifacts that were once there, arcane paintings probably hung on those walls. Even now, there's a little bit of residue. You can kind of pick off the ground a little bit of like, almost like, well, fairy dust is kind of the image that comes to my mind, but there is like a little bit of residue here from what once was. But right now, the only thing that you are seeing is there is an obvious magical door at the back of this temple, uh, up against the wall next between those two statues. And it looks like okay. you're, um, you're... Also, I hmm. need a tiny bit of clarification, sir. Please. You said holy. Hmm. I am not holy. I am the opposite of holy. So when you say holy, what do you mean? I say it, it is not a holy site. So oh, it not is... a holy site. Okay. Yeah. So this this was not a temple to a god. Okay. This was All right. no, no 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 worries no worries no worries. Uh, so th what I what I what I said it probably clipped out. Um, this was a temple not built to honor a god, but probably to give praise and offerings to this dragon. Okay. Um, is there anything? Um, and then I, hey, Jack or anybody else, do is there anything around here that maybe looks like an offering or something just in case I need to bring? Um, what about the crystals? Crystals dumped we dumped out onto the ground two miles down the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can make dead men go get them. <laughs> Time skip fifth, tw 20 minutes later, one hour <laughs> later, minutes. come back. <laughs> okay, we have an offering. You guys, what? Like, He's you guys come all back like. We're like four gems each time. Seven days pass. I don't know. Seven days pass. This package is definitely delayed. This this is UPS. Um... <laughs> <laughs> right? Tracking number not found. Oh, it's pure later. You guys are pure later. There we go. Do, do, do we really need to present an offering if we're delivering a parcel? Couldn't we just probably not? Probably not. Wait, I mean, the parcel's so nobody's, probably... Nobody's seen this dragon for how long? A hundred years. So, and they used to, like, this is dedicated to the dragon, so why don't we just leave it here and say job done? We have to present Wait, it has before one of those... the dragon. It has well, to I figure we could just for... leave it on this doorstep outside the gate and walk away and say delivered. Okay, well, I'm Amazon. Sending, so if, if you want to forge take a picture of it and send and, and do a sending? No, there's goblins waiting to snatch the package as soon as we turn our backs. Wow, that is assuming a lot about goblins. I'd like, okay, uh, but does anybody have a passive perception right of he's, 18 he's or higher? clearly... Yes. Okay. 18. <laughs> okay, um, so send, send it then. As Luella is getting frustrated about that, out of the corner of your eye, you're going to see a pair of green heads behind one of the columns going <laughs> <laughs> porch goblins. There's also a magic door in the back. I mean, it's well, possible. We could try that. Yeah. Um, but let's take a look at those statues first. Somebody was saying that uh, they uh, might be trouble. Is there a front? I mean, I have this? no idea. I just assumed. There is not. It's basically once upon a time. Picture like um, like a Greek ruin with like the pillars falling away. Yeah, it's not even a building. It's not even a building. Not even. No, you can't do, get homeowners. Should we just knock on the door? I shoot my crossbow at the statue. Okay. <laughs> um, shoot your crossbow at the statue. You bink. <laughs> And a bolt is going to lodge in one of these two statues. Um, as you are looking at them, they're they're basically statues of of dragons or dragonborn. I'll say because they do have hands, oh, um, no. and so it's two statues. One of which is holding out a hand, and the other of which is identically holding out a hand. And your bolt is going to lodge in the one on the right, and just thunk. Ow! Nothing happens. A oh. voice will come out of nowhere, and it will say, "Ow." Uh, well, shoot. sorry, statue. Maybe are, are we sorry? Ask we're sorry. Questions. Yes, at the moment. Yes, I think so. We were aiming at mm -hmm. the goblins, but they're over there. They're everywhere. Don't draw attention to it. My aim is it. bad. I have a thing about goblins. 
you'll hear some scuttering behind Speaking you. of, and then I turn around and then I try to look for the goblins. All right, I'm a, the goblins are going to try to hide because you're shooting people. And the goblins <laughs> roll to seven. So they're going, so what, you'll, what will happen is one goblin will be like right in your view, but one goblin is going to hide successfully behind the other goblin. So as far as you can tell, there's only one goblin. <laughs> Oh, awesome. So I just take my crossbolt and I try to shoot the goblins. You may. You may. If you get a nat 20, you're going to shish kebab both. While as Manny's doing that, uh, Jack's going to shake the hand of one of the s statues of the gargoyles. So as you walk up toward the statues, you're going to see... Do you speak Draconic? I do because of my amulet. Okay. Uh, on the... Or do you read Draconic, I guess I should say? Yes. Okay. So, Senathan, you will see that there, as, oh. as Jack approaches, a glowing blue glyph will ignite above the doorway that says, Enter, friend. And uh, as that occurs, uh, as you head up to the statues, the one that uh, was just shot by his mana will say, I always speak the truth. And the one on the left goes... <laughs> Because you can see that at least like years ago, someone broke this one's jaw off and ran off with it. Jack's gonna grab some random like stone and rubble and use mending. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that's the way it works, but you know what? <laughs> I'll make it work. Oh, I'm sure someone here has duct oh. tape or like. Actually, can Jack just take his tape. off? Yeah, you're a and skeleton, I'm... so. Uh, <laughs> Jack. I'm never okay. going to get used to seeing stuff like that. I don't actually You know what? That is the, that is the speak. dumbest that is the dumbest way to fix this problem. So it's going to work because that's how real life works in my experience. <laughs> so, uh taking your jaw and popping it up into the statue, it's going to I always tell lies. But what if you always tell lies, then telling us you're telling lies is a lie, then you're telling the truth, but then... I don't make the rules, buddy! Uh, but you do. So you do make the rules? <laughs> and you I have an buddy? easy way to settle this. I, th I yeah. thought we were gonna be friends. So he How? does make the rules. How what color is the sky? I think that's subjective, depending on your species. Um, I, I, I'm colorblind. He's lying. <laughs> Get him. Insight. <laughs> Let's break his jaw. All right, make an insight roll. <laughs> uh, what did you get on your shoot goblins roll, Monica? 21. Oh yeah, you're going to shoot both the goblins. Roll me damage. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, Jack. Do we want two goblin servants? Fifteen. Yeah. No. Fifteen. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what you are going to immediately know, Luella, is that the gar uh, the gargoyle is obviously lying because gargoyles have perfect color vision and are well renowned painters. Wow. Wow. Why would you lie about that? Because, because I, I always lie, which itself is a paradox I realize now. Mm-hmm. I am very wise. I went to school for a very long time and didn't drop out after my freshman year. So you that that is suspiciously did. specific. I didn't take this job as a door guard to pay for a crippling addiction to elven erotica I mean it's the year blah 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 who isn't addicted to elven erotica let's be honest I am not addicted to, to elven of. erotica says the one on the right so you're so the they both that lie then. insight <laughs> <laughs> Jack takes his scythe out <laughs> Uh, uh, inside check, yeah. Eight, 18. 
Uh, no, no, he's he doesn't appear to be lying. I <laughs> like them hairy. Oh, uh, oh. also valid. Disgusting. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Jack. That's the guy Some who's just a pile have skin of bones and hair. We don't yuck yums on this mountain, buddy. So is that what the kids are saying these days? Yuck yums? I have no idea. Is mm. crunk still a thing? Getting crunk with it? Wow, you're older than me, aren't you? Like significantly. <laughs> what year is it? Um, it's a fantasy world, so let's let's figure this out. It is year uh, six six fifty six. Oh, that's not so bad. Wait, what age? Oh, for God's sake, it's the Dragon Age. Fine, no, it's not the Dragon Age. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is. It is the the age of the age of farce. Yeah, there we go. It's a short age. Oh wow, I have been yeah. out for a while. Yeah. Um, the the glyphs say "Enter, friend." Is there still a Goblin King in power? Wait, there are glyphs? Wait. Oh, yeah, they say welcome, friend. Why don't we just go in? Oh. It says We're enter, friends. friend. It says enter, friend. Or but, enter, friend. So, yes, uh, the two statues are holding out their hands to you. I'm kind I'm of gonna like this. I'm going to shake one's hand. Which one? The one without the skeleton jaw, because that's just creepy. Okay. No, uh, but... Oh. No, that's... But that's not the right one. Actually, it is the Jack right shakes, one. Technically. Jack shakes the right one at the same time. <laughs> so they're they're welcome, friend. And both of the arms are gonna go junk, 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 and the door will lower into the ground, opening. Can we send in the mice first? How dare you! <laughs> Why don't we just send Jack in first? Very precious. I fear nothing. Some of us have families. Except fear itself. Why don't we send. Look, oh. Can Send Nothing even go in? He doesn't have any friends. Send. That was not, it's not true. very nice. It's, it, the truth hurts. Wow. That's not true. I don't send judge it you. Wait, I wait. Could attempt With that to old your friend. You mean servant. he's managed this? Send the servant in first. Hmm. Uh, go on, get. Mm. Go look for traps like a good servant. Okay. Uh, so, Deadman will walk inside of the door, which is just this pitch black void. It will go. Choo -choo 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 -choo. Ding. You'll hear come from inside. Ding. Here, let me to let me to help. Room oh. service. Um, that sounds safe to me. Then, or, or like a bell. Go ahead. I'll sneak yeah, in behind. Bram Bramble will happily jack. hop along in. Yeah. Okay. I think Luella's gonna go not at the very know. end, but like second to last, kind of think is her is her hope. Okay. So, heading into the next room, what you will find is an ornate corridor. It looks like a reception area, actually. There's a little, well, quite a tall obsidian desk on your left. The hallway is about 40 feet wide and about 100 feet deep. Ending at the end of this long, beautiful carpet that rides over black marble in this, what well, looks like an elevator lift. Uh, and then to the left of it, there is, it looks like emergency stairwell. Um, and then before that on the left, there is this very large reception desk with a bored looking skeleton sitting behind the desk, cobwebs connecting it, or spider webs connecting it to the reception desk. Hello? Housekeeping? 
And Deadman is pressing the... Yeah, there's a little, there's a little, like, on the side of the desk, and Deadman keeps going, very, very good, servant. You, okay. Um, bell. Yes, that's a bell. Ah. It's a bell, bell, bell. Did he bell. lose intelligence what do we have when here? he came back? No, he's smarter. So, what are you all doing? Y'all just don't mean. Uh, I'm gonna poke the skeleton with a stick. Okay. Oh, hey. Rapier. Hey. And this is like Knock a lobby. Off. Sort of. This is like a lobby. Yeah. You, a different is there skeleton? a directory on the wall? Uh, there is a uh, there is a directory. If you look around, uh, make me an investigation roll to see what you find. So poking okay. the skeleton, it's going to go and collapse with a xylophone noise. That was a good sound. I don't have a xylophone. It's the one prop I'm missing. So for my birthday, guys. Was that a nap? A nap too? I, I investigated with a two. Wow, that okay. Was... Skeletons are spooky and scary. I agree. You are going to like look around behind the desk, and as the skull falls on the ground, a spider is going to run out, and you find a spider. No! Ooh, dibs. <laughs> Luella's afraid of spiders? Oh, startled me. Hello. It tips a little top hat that it's wearing. <gasps> oh my goodness. Do you know where the directory the is? Spider gentleman. Make me an animal handling roll to see if you can convince the spider to give you a hand. Or eight. I got a 14. A 14? Mm -hmm. The spider doesn't really seem to understand what you're saying, but it's going to kind of like run along the side of the desk. Uh, at which point, anybody who's standing at the desk is going to see two things. One, there's a little nameplate that says Gina on it. Uh, and then down next to it, uh, you are going to see that there is like a, like a binder that says directory on it. Ah. Well, thank you, Fancy Spider. Mm. It didn't do anything. It, po it pointed out the directory. Oh. Bramble is gonna um, hang on. Where is this? Do to poof a top hat into being just so that she can tip her hat to the spider. The top hat spider will tip the top hat with one of its many legs, and in spider ease, will say, "My work here is done," and will <gasps> vanish. But you didn't do anything. Oh. <laughs> And we'll just run off. <laughs> hey, Jack, I have a question for you. Was there a name on the scroll or did it just say dragon? I, I Is remember there a name, name ending in the word snack. Yes, to Argo Snacks. Argo Snacks. Right. Kind of makes me hungry. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I could really go. Might for be some... cousins with party snacks. That guy's a dick. You would think he'd be fun for the name, but he's just like, ugh. He mm. wants to bury you behind a wall of bricks. It's weird. Mm. Yeah, Worst always fetish. looking for a cask. Jess, how dusty is this place? Like, is there? Oh, like pretty like the maid has not been up here in a while. Like, you're you're gonna definitely see. Uh, can can you do me a favor? Can anybody who's just looking around this area make me an investigation roll, except for Luella? Mm -hmm. Luella's had her fun. Mm -hmm. I got a four. <laughs> oh, uh. Wait, don't I get half my proficiency? Sixteen. Oh, okay. 16 minus 16. 1 Six, 15 is okay. 15. <laughs> 17. 17? All right. So, um, Ismena and Jack. Uh, Jack, you're kind of like drawing like something in the dust that's on the counter. Uh, and as you do, you notice that there's like the very faint outline. Uh, you can't really make out what words, but it looks like someone drew in the dust beneath this dust. <laughs> So you don't think you're the first adventurers that have been through here. Uh, Ismena, you're going to notice as well that there are some little signs of people having passed through here. Uh, but most notable of which is directly under the directory is kind of wedged against the back wall like it fell over at one point is a is a like a guest ledger, like a sign-in. 
Hark! There is a guest ledger. Perhaps we shall sign our names in this infernal book. Um, mm. And then I go grab the guest ledger. Sure, I don't know why you. I wanted to say Hark. I just did. Sometimes you gotta. You know, I'm here for the drama. It was very dramatic. I mean, after I saw the spider with his top, top hat, I thought, maybe this is a hotel for, for bards. Oh my goodness, one can only wish. <laughs> Do some fixing up, though. It really could. It's cozy. So what are we signing our souls away to? Uh, there is a guest ledger. Maybe so our ghost you. next is in it. The guest ledger. Well, there's also the room led. There's two ledgers, right? There's, there's the a directory. One, the directory, yeah. and then there's the guest ledger. Yeah. Um, can Can I see the directory? There's two books. There's two books. There so was, one's more of a clipboard, but yeah, you get the idea. There's two things to read. There's two We're things with information. I know. We we got to split that much work between the party. That's too much. That's, that's too much reading. Too many brain cells. Uh, Rambo would like to read the directory. Okay, uh, checking the directory, you can see that it's pretty standard stuff. Like there are some like guest rooms under renovation. Uh, there no is one. the treasure hoard, uh, which is on the lower level. Um, it's treasure hoard and and offices, as well as um, you'll see that there is listed an infinite flowing waterfall of relaxation. Um, there is a little office area for uh, for what word would they use? Unpaid permanent interns. The branding here, an infinite waterfall as opposed to a waterfall that just randomly stops. Ugh. So fancy. Um, you'll also see that there are a number of other like levels that are that are in the side of the mountain as well. Like there's um, there's the new vault, there's the old vault, there is um, of course at the very back on the other side of the 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 basically the sauna, the waterfall sauna. Um, there is Argos Nax's lair. Ah, so we do get to go to the sauna on the way. That sounds nice. Mm -hmm. I'd like to read the guest ledger. Sounds good. Uh, you can see that there were quite a few people uh, in this. It looks like the last entry was about 25 years ago. Someone named uh, Lovic the Courier signed in do we know what delivery service he was with uh make me a history roll to see if you uh if you know the name of lovic there are also quite a number of people who have signed in beforehand uh let's see um uh garleon mock um uh zabnak um or zarnak i mean uh let's see uh uh, Shirthus the Friendly has signed in. Uh, Skilly and the Brave. Um, uh, Bob from Maintenance. Okay, two questions. Yeah. Well, or, no, a question and a result. The result is 19. Yes. The question is, did they sign out? Yes, everybody except for Lovic has signed out. Okay. So the last entry that was 25 years ago, the others were about 75 years prior to that. Um, but Lovic did not sign out. And you know, you know that Lovic used to work for uh, for imps like you because his time card is still next to yours at the headquarters. And presently he has the second highest amount of overtime of anybody there because he has not come back from his last mission. Okay, oh, so... Um... They call I it would 50 like, years. Have we, how confident are we that this scroll isn't some sort of, I don't know, trap us in here, make us the offering sort of I was going to say. Oh, not even remotely. I the snack. Could them. They, what if we're the snack? They, they probably wouldn't be paying yeah. overtime. Look, then. I know I'm a snack, but <sighs> really. I mean, Jack's all bones, so that's probably not too appetizing. No offense. I mean, what if it's skinny? None taken. Unless Party Snacks is a dog. Okay. I'm surprised they didn't tell us about our co <laughs> Wrong dragon. Our co worker? Yeah. 
Maybe we should open the scroll. What? That that would be violating the sacred courier's oath. That's right. Do we have to at least be in the, their presence or something? Yeah. Hmm. Technically, okay. at the very we least, are they in have their presence. For it. If they're in the mountains, in, in their, their presence. presence. Unless they're spying at us through some secret sort of eye hole. What if what if we go to their horde? Because that's like their presence. Sure, as long as we go to the spa en route. Or we could split the party. I didn't know we were having a party. We're always having a party. I guess it's that's a party true. in a barred hotel. The party party. Party party. I'm fine with it. Well, I say to the sauna. Friends. To the sauna. <laughs> is um is dead hand around? Could dead hand open this scroll? Dead man, dead hands. Mm, dead, dead man, try. Yeah, absolutely. That, dead that's man, try opening the, the scroll. Mm. Never. Mm. Mm. Don't don't listen to them. Only to me. Mm. He's already dead meat. Can mm. I? Use invisible mage hand and try to steal the scroll. Ah, uh, yes, you can. You can. Uh, you can go ahead and make me a sleight of hand roll versus um, versus Cal's uh, passive perception. Uh oh, what's your passive, Cal? Uh, how do you calculate that again? So it's ten plus your perception score. Twenty-two. Well, I was oh, do it. passive fourteen. Okay, so. You're going to kind of just mage hand that away because you're an arcane trickster, right? So yep. you can absolutely just whoop. All right. So you're going to pull this sealed scroll with this big, like big kind of um, like platinum seal on the side of it with an arcane rune emblazoned in it. Oh, shit. Hmm. It kind of looks like a pencil case, but like a really nice one. I don't have a prop for that. Do I, I think I could uh, sneakily open it? Like and make it look like it hasn't been tampered with. Like, what kind of a what kind of a role would that be? You can try. You can certainly try. You can make I, me a. I want to look at it. I, I want to look at it and and uh, see if I think I can do it first. Sure. And well, then make me a uh, make me a uh, make me an intelligence thieves tools role to see if you think you can break into it. Uh, Luella. I, okay, Luella isn't doing anything. I just need it to be known that she, if she sees that what he's doing, she's just watching and kind of just like. Hmm. I think I think that Luella might be watching. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, Luella she's just might have seen this paying one. very close attention. She's not going to do anything. Twenty three, twenty three. You think you might be able to force it open? Yeah, like it. It not without, like, that seal popping though. Huh. I'll give it back to Jack. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, I don't think I can open it without popping the seal. Whoops. No, no thanks. I already have one. Uh, this is yours. What? Oh, I must have dropped it. Yeah, uh, that's it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe you should invest in like like a, a pocket or something if you're going to shove things down your like your non-existent It all throat. fits inside the plate. That's it. Is and it you lying, see though? you see some holes and like a little rat, little mouse like peeks its head out and grabs the scroll mm -hmm. and pulls it pulls it into it. I, th I think they have a whole filing system in there. They're all very organized. Jack, I would really like to um I would really like to investigate the outside of the scroll without opening it. Seems Just harmless in enough. Okay. Suspiciously harmless. Hmm. There you go. Thank right. you. Um, Kelly, I'm going to roll Arcana. Please do. I'm going to step back 30 feet. Nope. That's a nope? Was that on that one? They're both nope. Um, the best I can do is 11 plus 14. 14. So looking at this, ooh, this is a pretty powerful seal. Uh, anybody that opens this and anybody inside of a near range probably is going to get hit with some type of explosive glyph. 
that's even if it does open. Like, this is definitely trapped, like, looking at it. And even if the trap goes off, it might not open until its conditions are met, which are probably being in the presence of Argus Nax. All right, so that answers that question. I hand the scroll back to Jack, and then I... Uh... What did you figure out? We have to open it in front of Argos Snacks, otherwise we all explode. Into oh, I could have told you that. You could have. Could you? Then why yes. didn't you? I did. I kept saying we only open it once we're in the presence of the party snacks. I thought... No, Argos Snacks. Mm. Remember, party snacks is that really rude to dragon with the bricks. Oh, right. Argo Snacks. I tried to set you up with him before, and he was just the worst. Ugh, I'm sorry about that one. No, you know, no one's asking you to, to play matchmaker. Hey, you, you deserve really, really love, funny. okay? But love? All right. It's he, it's he ain't got I head for the sauna. I look just, at all of Jack you. Jack just want to give somebody the bone. <laughs> and I go. <laughs> Kelly got the joke I've been setting up for this entire time. <laughs> it's because he ain't got no body. This is why this is why we should always be in games together. Yeah. Okay. I understood style. that reference. Oh my gosh. All right, good. All right, so uh, there are two ways out of this room, including um, not including the one that you entered through. Uh, so it looks like there's a stairwell that'll take you down the 50 flights, and then there is an elevator directly in front of you. Stairs. Okay. I mean... Modern convenience. Modern convenience. Elevator Does that hasn't work? been used in 20 plus years. I, I, I think uh, I'm with this. Neither on this has one. Jack, and Jack still works. Hmm? I mean, if you're if you're if you're worried about the elevator, you could always make an investigation roll just to check and see if it looks like it's in good I order. I absolutely could. However, I intend to enter the elevator. What if we send Denman <laughs> Me too. in there? Maybe it's a manual one. Hmm. Send Deadman in there, so see if it works. Deadman is still playing with the bell. Dead men, we would all you... investigate the elevator before stepping inside of it and falling to dun, 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 certain death. I, okay. I guess that does boom, seem boom, boom. reasonable. Fine. I'll step back and investigate the elevator. <sighs> all right. Go ahead. So the elevator I is... 17. 17? Okay. The elevator is big enough for about... I'd say about 10 people if you really push it. Like, really crowd them in. Um, It's pristine. Like, it looks like it must be magically cleaned or something like that. And there's not even any, like, graffiti carved into the side of it. Like every other elevator I've ever been in. Okay, now that's more suspicious, because why is the lobby so dirty if the elevator's clean? Hmm. It well... must be in regular use. To, to where? There's only one way to find out. Send I go inside the elevator and I look at the buttons. Sure. I just want to uh, know so, if it plays that music. Uh, so there are there are a number of buttons along the 50 flights of stairs that take you down. Uh, most of them are like minion quarters. Uh, there's another one that's accounting. Uh, there's another one that's research and development. Uh, and um, there are... Uh, at the very bottom, it is Argo Snacks, and which Argo Snacks's floor is written in a completely different type of uh, different type of font. It's much more papyrusy and large, because you know that was back when papyrus was cool about a hundred years ago. Okay. Well, shall we get inside the elevator and press the bottom floor button? Senothan. That's what we I wanted feel like to you're, do. You're on the, the hunt for friendship and companionship, right? Sure. That's exactly what I'm on the hunt for. Oh, no, no, no. no right, Senothan? I'm, I'm, I'm in Senothan. I, I, I got lots of friends. Well, for these friends, do you want to do us a little favor? And point my little fingers together, which my hand tracking can't do because the microphone's in the way. Okay. Do you want to push the button? I, fine. 
not like um, it'll work anyway. Luel's gonna... gonna step forward and cast the Death Ward, I believe, is one of my uh, spells for. Yeah. <laughs> I'm You're very friend. distrustful of statues, stairs, and elevators. <laughs> right? She's from Barovia! That, that is a good point. Button. That is a good point. <laughs> All right. I got cure uh, wounds. I'm not. I'm not worried. Quick, quick question: um, are, Is Deadman going in the elevator with you, or are you leaving him here to, to play with the bell? Yeah, maybe they're on a break, so we'll leave him. We'll okay. leave him there. To He's just gonna play keep with playing the with the bell. Here, <laughs> bear. Oh my god. <laughs> He's a much nicer guy in death. <laughs> okay. Uh, and without a tongue. Death has oh. been an improvement. Right? Good, 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 it's an improvement goodbye, for everyone. Deadman. I just got the name. Oh my gosh. Great. Honestly, Luella thinks a lot of things are much more um, tolerable dead, but... It shows. That's how she was All right. raised. All right. So who's <laughs> pressing the button? Okay. All right. So pressing the button, you'll hear... Well... But from inside of the elevator, as the doors go, whoop, and you're gonna, you're holding the elevator button. It starts to light up slowly, and as you are pressing it, you're gonna like try to pull your finger back, and it's not gonna pull back. It's a mimic. And elevator music is going to begin playing, but it's not normal elevator music. It's for some reason Kevin McLeod's volatile, volatile reaction. Can I get an initiative roll, please? Oh my gosh. Are we inside of Mimic? <laughs> what? Who would use an elevator Mimic? As you are looking, the buttons are all going to go <laughs> and turn around because they're actually eyeballs. Oh. And you have your finger right. stuck to the wall. Oh um, all right. Let's... Yeah, you poked it in the eye. That's not a great roll, but... All right, so go ahead and drop your initiatives in the chat for, for ease. Oh, everybody's already done it. Everybody's so great. Uh, okay, so Bramble is first, then it is is Mana and Luella. Uh, and then it is... Oh, never mind. Is Mana is first... Nice. 22. Um, okay, then it is Jack, Senathan, and the Mimic, but I'm going to say that the Mimic gets a f surprise round. Uh, so, uh, it is going to use its Caustic Mystery action, and from the speakers, they're going to hear <laughs> and I need everybody inside of here to make me a Dexterity saving throw to kind of hit the deck. Ding. All right, uh, 23. Okay, you are... Oof. 19. Ooh, good. Nat's 20. The dex okay. save? Uh, dex save. Hang on, D&D Beyond's being weird. I'm just going to roll this by hand. Totally. Nah, I rolled a one by hand. <laughs> oh, no. Seven. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so, Damn. folks. We're, uh, D &D Beyond. we're using our house mm. rules uh, for this, if everybody's okay with it, where you can botch I'm and uh, and crit saves. <laughs> so, uh, or we can, use, we can go raw. Which one do you guys want to do? I'm, I'm here to get it All or nothing. Let's go. All or nothing. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so, everybody who successfully saved, uh, Senathan, what'd you get? Uh, 23. 23? And Luella got a... Got an 8. Okay. All right. So, Luella, you are going to take 28 points of acid damage and are blinded until the end of your next turn. Oof. Um, I'm not deeply <laughs> concerned. You, uh, all right, Bramble, you're going to take 56 points of acid damage and are going to be blinded until, uh, we'll give you two turns on that because of the botch. So I'm, I'm Br Bramble is down. <laughs> okay, so Bramble goes ah, and then like from the from the speakers, acid's gonna spray right on her and just like <laughs> drop her to the floor. Everybody else is gonna take fourteen I points and is slime. not blinded. Uh, your slime's okay. What Dying. kind of what kind of damage is this? Acid, acid damage. Ah. 
All right, and now we're going to be going into regular initiative phase. Bramble, you are in death saves at this point. Bramble, can you please tell me what memory you are holding on to to try to keep you alive? I think Bramble is holding on to that moment in the concert at the school when the whole band was there and it was time for her big bagpipe solo. And she looked out at the audience and she thought for a moment that her parents weren't there and she was really heartbroken, but she still found the courage to step out onto the stage and play her bagpipes anyways. But then through the undulating bag and the blarping tubes, she spied her parents coming in late and hopping over the crowd uh, and was filled with musical passion. Okay, you know what? Roll me beautiful. your death save with advantage for that memory. That was a good sure. memory. I'm an easy mark. You're, you're going to love hearing that I rolled an eight twice. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just immediately dies. Okay, so, well, not immediately, not immediately, there's time. Okay, I know, so I know, I got more. Okay, so normally on, on our home channel, I roll them and I don't tell you the result, but because this is a con game, let's just go ahead and have you roll them like that. Okay. So, sure. or, or we could switch if you wanted that, if you want them to be secret. No, it's okay. You can, well, maybe after this one, we'll see. All right. Okay, so, okay. uh, Bramble, you are going to go as you start to melt a bit more, uh, a little bit Robocopy. Um, all right. Is mana, it's your turn. I sigh heavily, dramatically. <laughs> say. Oh, I think your internet's sputtering. Yep, frozen. <laughs> Sigh dramatically and say, if only we had Bardic Inspiration. If only we had Bardic Inspiration. Oh no. Oh no, we lost her. And that Probably messes with like the overlay because we're not using our normal program. Ah! <laughs> All right. So hopefully she'll be back in just a moment, folks. In the meanwhile, hope you're all having a good time at GaryCon. If you like what we're doing here, be sure to hit us up on twitch.tv slash dorktales, youtube.com slash dorktales, where our games are sometimes marginally more serious. They're often quite more serious, but it's a con game, so we're having some fun. Also, good to see everybody out here. Hoping you're having a great time at GaryCon and excited for what is coming next, because I know you are going to have a fantastic time with the groups that are going to be after us, because I believe Dead Aussie Gamer mm -hmm. is running tonight. Question, um, are any of us actually using a light source, or are we just traveling around in darkness? You need light oh. to see? No. <laughs> yeah. Pramble right, does Not back. anymore, no. All right, so... That was terrible. I'm sorry. It was especially terrible because it said you were like, I sigh and say, and it cut off right when you did <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. And it was like, it was truly, it was very dramatic. We yeah. see, we're, we're dramatic. anticipating. Oh, I was trying to be very dramatic for Bramble because I, normally I'm not very dramatic. Normally I only have like five words of vocabulary. Normally it's like, uh, it's, yeah. I don't know. What, I don't know what kind of language we're allowed to use on GaryCon, but I know what words you're thinking. The the Cavill I, dialect. I I am definitely thinking the Cavill dialect at this moment in time. Yes, that is a, that is a very very appropriate. appropriate thing. <laughs> so so back back. You're back. Uh, All right. Back. Uh, so I would like to take the sharp pointy end of my sword mm -hmm. and try to open the door with the sword and just slice all the way down. All right. Go ahead and make me an attack roll, please. Yes, sir. Wow, that was fun. Uh, um, I got a six. A six? Okay. A six. So, stabbing your sword forward, it is going to... You're going to smash into the door uh, but as you try to get it between between the sliding doors you'll see that there's this lattice work of teeth that are holding it tight and you're just not going to be able to get your sword in between them oh no there's teeth <laughs> oh no there's teeth do you have any other <laughs> actions you like to do those are like bones worse um yes i would like to um so since I 
Did I just lose my sword? No, Is you just started like trying to poke it through. You were kind of like trying to like floss the door and it just didn't quite work. Oh, okay, great. So I was trying to floss the door and it didn't quite work. So in a rage, I go, Arr! back. And then I, that's the cavil word I'm using. Yeah, and okay. then I stab it right into the floor. All right, go ahead. Make me another attack roll to see if you can pierce its natural armor. Piercing natural armor with the badly rolled die. I believe in you. I don't believe in the dice, though. Uh, that would be a whole ten. A whole ten. All right. Uh, so stabbing into the floor, your sword is going to go pink. <laughs> Very frustrating. Uh, do you have any bonus actions? Um, I have dash. Fair. I'm going to try to dash out of the door. Okay. So, tell you what, make me an athletics roll to see if you can try to push through the door. I'd like to light it on fire from the inside, but... I believe in you. I think you can. I think there's no downside to this. But we're 15. all in it. 15? Okay, so slamming into the door. So you're going to take a step back and do a full dash with your with your boots of uh, boots of sprinting. And are going to slam into the door enough that you can try to, like, you'll see that the jaws are going to part a little. You're not going to be able to push all your way through, but you're going to open them up a bit that other people can start working on it a bit. And it's at that point that you'll see that, despite being inside of a mimic, the mimic is moving down. At pretty rapid pace. So you're going to start seeing floors go which is about all you'll get in about six seconds. Back! <laughs> all right, Luella, you are blinded and it is your turn. Yeah, so, um, I didn't say this before, but I I, I will say that as a, that she will cast mage armor, mm -hmm. hasn't impacted anything thus far. I assume um, you had a cast at the beginning of the day, to be honest. Okay, yeah, cool. So it's awesome. you did mention it in the chat uh, before. Yep. Getting. Oh in. yeah, I wasn't sure if that got. You did. Yeah. Okay. So, um, we're enclosed in this, right? Like you, we you can enclosed. feel the side of this thing really easily. Like even if she's blind, it's hard to miss, right? Yes, yes that is correct. And as you touch it, the hard wall is going to be kind of become suddenly yielding and fleshy, like touching the inside of a mouth. Cool. I'm going to like, cast Vampiric Touch. Balls. Okay, cool. Because uh, <laughs> I don't, th I think, I know it says to treat it as a, as a melee spell attack, yep. but I feel like this should work. Do you uh, want me you to? Are, you're inside of it, so I'll negate the disadvantage for blind. Okay. Because literally, you're just like, it's not like you're gonna. Well, I mean, you could still miss. So you roll it flat. It could, true. If you miss, you're just gonna kind of go, I've, I've got it. Yeah, and you'll fall you on the ground. Smack I roll a Lord, one, who do I hit instead? <laughs> uh, pro probably, probably Millie. <laughs> no, I know my bone. Um, that is a dirty 20 to hit. Okay, dirty 20 is absolutely going to hit with Vampiric Touch. Go ahead and roll yeah, it for me. This is a fourth level uh, slot. Uh, how many is that? Okay. I'm just gonna... One sec. Totally. Okay. It should just be... Boop, boop, boop. Okay, I believe that is seventeen necrotic, and I have, um, I have concentration on it. Yep, and you gain half that back if I'm not mistaken. Round yes. down. Yes. Okay. That should be eight, I believe. Okay. All right. So, uh, slapping your hand against the wall, you're going to whoa, siphon the energy into into your body through the vampiric touch, uh, rounding you out to a nice a nice good number. I think like uh, give, gives you another like what nine hit points, eight hit points, something like that. Um, oh, all right. And what else do you do? Do you have a bonus action to use? I do. So I have a fun. I'm gonna manifest the form of. 
Do this. You gonna become big woman already? No, it doesn't make her big. It just makes her like scary vampire. Uh, oh, yeah. We're going goth mode. Yeah. yeah basically, just turning into into Lady D. All right. Uh, I don't think she quite go quite that tall, but yes. We can. Dream. Somehow she gets hotter. That's all. Okay. Um, you just you just become your character from Requiem. Done. <laughs> Yeah, so I regain 1d10 uh, temporary hit points, and then I'm just saying, oh, when I hit a creature with an attack, you can force it to make a wisdom saving throw. If the saving throw fails, the target is frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Wait, you're frightened and inside? <laughs> it's frightened and in okay? <laughs> so that won't work for this round, but next round. That's amazing. Yeah, I should have done that first. I forget, I wasn't thinking about it. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, we good. Okay. We good. Okay, so you're gonna go, you go shift up into your form of dread. Okay, Jack, Mr. Marrow, it's your turn. All right, Bramble is still on the ground. Bramble is still on the ground. Ah, and a few people are acid splashed. Yeah, you're fine acid. actually. That nat twenty, you just kind of like went what, and like the acid hit your face, and you're like ah, a facial. Oh no, hey. Oh, that cleared up my pores. Yeah, you don't have any anymore. Any residual pores taken <laughs> care of. <laughs> All right. You can thank me later. And Jack raises his uh, hands and uses aid. Uh, and will give Bramble. And who got acided real good? Bramble. Luella got hit, hit with 28 points. <laughs> Ooh. Luela yep. and Senathan, did you? I took 14. I think right. uh, Ismail also did. Yes, okay. I did pick 14. All right. I choose Ismina because... Because, uh, well, Senathan's got to earn my friendship. Okay, And so you uh, increase your... Uh, health by 10 because I'm up casting it. Okay. Uh, but that increases your maximum by 10 as well. Yep. All right. So, it's 10, 10 and I think that permanent means hit Bramble points. Bramble is not dead. Bramble is not dead. Bramble has 10 hit points, and, and the cap is also 10 higher by, by proxy. Okay. So, Bramble, you will go. Eah! And the visions of your parents, like, dancing at the back of the auditorium are is replaced by the image of, like, Ismena kind of dancing and slamming into the door and people screaming inside of this, this hell carriage. <laughs> All and right. as a bonus action, uh, he will laugh and uh, brandish his great scythe. Okay, sounds good. Um, Senathan, it is your turn. What do you do? Okay, so I'm stuck to the wall with my finger. Your finger is stuck to the wall, my friend. You can try to make me an escape roll to, to move away, but otherwise you are grappled. Okay, um, I'm going to attack it with my beard. Okay. Just attack the wall with my beard. Sounds good. All right, anybody who is looking, Senathan's beard, his dark beard is going to suddenly coalesce into this inky this inky flowing like venom-esque dagger that's going to be and is going to like poke the wall so that'll be a 20 to hit yep because you took the uh the abyssal beard the grim beard <laughs> is, this, is this the first thing bramble sees when when she opens her eyes is your beard turning into a knife and stabbing the wall <laughs> yep <laughs> just gonna sh do that that thing where you shake your head like you must still be dreaming and is there a an ally within five feet of me and the yes. enemy so, awesome. Um, Sneak attack. You are literally standing over Bramble's body, so she counts. Perfect. So that's uh, five. I'm ten, useful. 14, uh, 28, 30 damage. 30 damage? Okay, that is a very good amount of damage. Uh, From your, the beard. Your, your beard is going to slash down the side of the panel, um, which is going to rupture several of the eyeball buttons that are looking at you, and it's going to... 
Uh, it is the Mimic's turn now. Oh, the Mimic. No, I still oh, get my bonus oh, you action. You still get a bonus action. You're right. What and do you do? I'm going to uh, teleport to the other end with my Raven's Queen Blessing, uh, which turns me pretty much into looking like a ghost since we're all going goth mode. And uh, I have resistance to all damage until my next turn. That sounds good. Uh, I'm no the... longer grappled. You're no longer grappled. Uh, you might be in a second. So teleporting over, uh, the Mimic Vader is going... Huh. Do you think if Darth Vader had a daughter, that you name her Ella? I guess it'd be Leia itself. Oh, that's his wife. That's his wife, Elevator. You're right, you're right. Damn, sorry. I was trying to make that joke work. But you see, this is why I have to go to you because you're a dad now. So I got to get the dad jokes direct from the source. <laughs> I'm working on it. Okay. Uh, so the doors are going to go and try to bite Ismena. Uh, and that is going to be... Ismena, is your armor class 18? No. It's higher? It's lower. Oh, no. Um, okay. So, uh, Ismena, the doors are going to go wide and are going to bite into you for 19 points of piercing damage. Ouch. And seven points of acid damage as yeah. the door bites into you and tries to digest you. Uh, meanwhile, the pseudopods from the roof are going to lash out. One of them is going to try to punch Luella in the face. Uh, Luella, that is a three. Uh, the other one is going to try to hit Senathan. Senathan, I have a 23 to punch you after slashing my eyes. Does that hit? Yes, it does. Okay, do you have anything that can prevent that? Nobody took silvery barbs? Uh, no. Ramble? I will use my reaction, though, to use Uncanny Dodge and Ramble. then half the damage. <laughs> okay. Because so of resistance you... to it. So. It sounds good. So, you are going to take 9... 14 points of bludgeoning damage as one of the pseudopods goes <laughs> from the roof and smacks you in the side of the, in the, side of the chest. So, uh, have your damage and then r lower your damage again, uh, as you would. However, you Perfect. are grappled and restrained. No... Help! All right. It's got me! Part of the roof just kind of reaches out and like grabs a hold of his shirt. Kind of like trying to get your lunch money out of you. All right, top of the initiative. Uh, Bramble, um, you are... Oh, I said you were blinded, actually, so I guess you really aren't looking... So you're, um, you're, you're going to have disadvantage on sight checks for this round until you get a chance to clear your eyes. With sure, that. sounds good. So um... Bramble, uh, waking up to this, to, to ash and dust, what do you see? Um, I mean, I think Bramble is going to leap dramatically to her feet and yell, inspired by friendship, towards Sanothan to try to pass off a piece of bardic inspiration. Um, should probably dramatically acquire a cool mask, because of course. Um, and then let's cast Cure Wounds on herself at fourth level. <laughs> that sounds great. Do it. See what I get here. I got 23 hit points. I'll take it. All right, and that's your can turn. Do it all. Bards are uh, great. Oh gosh, I gave myself 123 hit points. Whoops, I am unstoppable. That is a yeah, hell of a better. spell you just cast. I know, right? Oh my goodness! Wow, wild. Um, and yeah, I think that that's basically all of the things. So your bardic inspiration dice is, however, cool if you use it on a roll and you fail that roll, you get to keep the dice. Ooh, that's nice. Thank you. I know, right? Fancy. It's it's, and it's what, uh, particularly eloquent. Is it maybe. D eight. D10? It's D8, yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I feel I have a friend. You do. <laughs> Friendship inspiration. All right, is Mana? It's your turn now. What would you like to do? So the door is bit into you, like kind of the side of your thigh, and it's kind of. I'm the, gonna the, grunt first of all. Okay. I'm gonna grunt. Okay. And no, then no. I'm going to summon from the annals of my brain how to defeat this creature. Um, okay. So what would that what would that be? I'm going to say mimics survival? are mimics are monstrosities. So I would allow I'd allow arcana or nature. Since they are simultaneously magical and found in nature. Okay. Let me hang on just a second. Oh, I'm definitely rolling arcana. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. A natural 20 plus bonuses. Okay, so looking at that, uh, you are moving at a pretty solid clip down here. Uh, you honestly think that um, mimics in general are 
they don't tend to have any specific weaknesses except for this situation has two weaknesses for one little known fact mimics have one weakness that is not in the player's handbook monster manual anything like that it is alcohol because they have an adhesive pseudopod and what gets out uh what reverses a uh, a sticky solution nerd alcohol. Nerd! <laughs> Look at the nerd! Jack just Shut starts up. shouting that out, and we're like, what? <laughs> so so you could definitely make this thing much... If you had, like, a bunch of vodka on you, you could make this thing much more, like, weak. Um, but also, it looks like it is descending from the roof. If you blew the roof, you would probably cause the thing to fall and probably kill itself. You might die, too, but what a way to die. Anybody have ale? <laughs> ale? Anyone? Whiskey? Is that what kids uh, call it these I, days? I mean, I have a flask. Um, toss it here. Or I don't think this is time for drinking. And then I. Or is it? I, I will guess. Rules mechanics wise, will pose self so you can use your your grabbing thing to grab it. You didn't use your item react. <laughs> your, you didn't use your item interaction. You know that's true. That's true. You're right. You're right. There we go. We'll oh, yeah. Also, Zippo fuel. Yeah. Any solvent, really. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out rules wise how to make this work. So basically, uh, you could just reach over, grab it. You could dump it on the side of where it's grabbing Senathan. Sure, I do that. Okay. That sure. sounds good. All right. Um, Senathan, uh, there's going to be a moment as this... What what kind of alcohol do you carry on your bramble? Uh, oh, like something that is cheap and terrible and has been scented with cheap and terrible perfume to make it smell like it's fancy and classy. What, what variety of it? Uh, oh, it's like technically vodka at a glance. Okay. I was about to say, because if it's like, if it's tequila, do, don't feed a mimic tequila. I mean, not 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 on a Thursday. Oh, goodness. It's old old Barovia. Yeah, you're, you're you're right, Monica. Okay, so you're pulling <laughs> the bottle of old Barovia out um, that has like a, a comical Barovian peasant as the logo going. <laughs> um, you'll pour that out, and you'll hear the mimic go <laughs> and detach from um, from the side of Senathan's chest. <laughs> And start to sizzle a little bit. Uh, is Mana, that, we'll say that was your bonus action if you want to do another hack and slash. Sure, let's do that. I would do like it. to poke. Uh, let's let's poke the mimic again. All right, where are you poking the mimic? I am going to poke the mimic, looking up and trying to poke him in the ceiling. In the ceiling, good. Mm -hmm. Poke him in the in the in the roof of his mouth. Because honestly, if you had to get hit in a part of your mouth, that would feel. I think that might be the worst. Yeah. Right. Also, so you cold objects in the roof of your mouth too. Like brain you could freeze. get, you could give the mimic brain freeze. Yeah, you totally could. I guess the mimic. Does if have I a had mood. a freezy spell, that would be mm. great. But I don't. Um. I just poke things apparently very poorly. That's <laughs> because I rolled a six. A six? All right, so yeah. you grab your sword and you, like, kind of jump up and try to slash it, but um, as you do, it's going to go and kind of, like, suck itself back up out of your reach a little bit. Okay. And then I just grunt again and I point. Okay. Hoping that party members will take the hand. You're, you're a season one witcher, I see. That's right. My vocabulary is few. That's... That's fine. Eventually, eventually you'll realize that we're not following the books and you'll leave and be replaced by Liam Hemsworth. So it's fine. Are you canceling me right now? <laughs> no, not for another, not for another season or two. Um, oh, Liam Hemsworth will cancel the show for us. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he's a that's nice not, man. No, that's not very nice. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but he's not Henry. Uh, Luella, you're up. <laughs> All right. So now that I'm no longer blind, um, at least don't have to worry about the whole potentially missing the wall as much thing. Um, still concentrating on this spell. I'm going to keep trying to... I'm, I'm going to suck out as much life from this thing as I can because 28 acid was awful. Um, okay. So the wording on your, on your ability... 
Yeah. Is when you hit with an attack. Um, so it's make a melee spell attack with a creature in your reach on a hit. No, no, no. You're um, you're you're frightening. You're frightening. Oh yeah. Okay. So that is just um. Form of dread. Once during each of your turns, when you hit a creature with an attack, so I have to redo. I have to do another attack, even though I've got the spell still up. Mm-hmm. So if it hits, it'll keep going, and then it makes a wisdom saving throw. If it fails, it is then frightened until the end of my next turn. Okay. Um, that just happens. That's that, that's a side effect. That's not what the, the main purpose of this. Okay. So um, go ahead and and do me your vampiric touch damage. Because that's a bonus action to keep that up, right? Uh, no, it's as part of my... Uh, it's a full action? I can make an attack again on each of my turns as an oh, action. Okay. So basically right, so, it's just so maintaining go ahead and do it. that? Yeah. Um, and then I've got this other feature here, which... Even though it's already necrotic, if I... The Grave Touch, if I declare it necrotic, I guess, I also get an extra damage dice of yep. necrotic. Yep. When determining. Hmm. Not sure if that stacks for the amount I heal, but... You know what? Well, I'll allow it. Let's just all right, that's it. a 24 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Roll me damage. And it has a... Does it have a wisdom save against the fear effect? Yeah, that's a... Um... Uh, don't worry about it. I rolled. Okay. Don't worry. It's all good. Okay. okay. I believe that's 21 necrotic. Ooh. Which means I take 10, I think. That is correct. Okay, so um, the giant, giant, sexy, scary Luella uh, is going to have a motorcycle drive by, sorry. Um, <laughs> get a muffler. Um, <laughs> All right, you pass a floor where they're do where gnomes are doing R and D testing on new conveyance methods involving crude oil, um, and uh, or they invented whoopee cushions. I don't know, um, but you reach out and you you vampiric touch the wall, doing doing the you know the dance you have to do to cast it, and then um, the the elevator is going to go and moan in terror uh, as it. Um, is it has its life siphoned away. Do you have any other actions you'd like to do? I think that's my action, and I don't think I've got really any useful bonus actions, so... Okay. All right, Jack, it is your turn. <clears throat> All right, have they slashed the ceiling open yet? They have not. Hmm, is there kind of like a... like a corpuscle or, like, nerve yeah, center sure. in the middle? Sure. Yeah, there's definitely like a like a like a dangly do. There's a, you know, it's kind of like the roof of a mouth. We'll say that you can kind of like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's the uvula up there, or the soft ah, palate. That's what those fleshy things have, right? And uh, Jack's going to uh, slash at it to try to like sever it from the rest of it as if that's like the thing that's acting like the elevator cable yep and then like have everybody like make a human or humanoid uh like rope and hang on and okay so let you... the mass of flesh fall as we okay so what slower. so you're trying to grab like you're trying to blow the roof yeah okay so, to to blow the roof, if you want to get up and cut its its uvula or like cut it to the the, the dangly bit, um, you'll have to get up through. It's an elevator, so let's say you'll have to get up through an access panel. Okay. So, um, how the hell would we do this? Uh, make me an attack roll with disadvantage to burst through that thing. Mhm, mhm, mhm. Let's see my spells here. So, yeah, mm, this doesn't count as a humanoid, does it? No. <laughs> what a horrible world that would be. Yes, yes, that will not work. Yeah. 
So you're kind of trapped inside this elevator right now. You know that it has the basic, like, kind of physiology of an elevator. That's the right word to use. Um, geometry. Geography of an elevator. The geography mm. of an elevator sounds like, like a, like a, like a teen youth novel. Um, All right, we're, we're crashing through. Unless, unless anybody needs healing desperately. Uh, I think Bramble needs more healing. <laughs> Bramble's got 10 hit points. Or no, 30, 20 hit points? No? Uh, I mean, I, I've healed 23 and then I've got the 10 temporary, so I'm oh, okay. 33. I assume they're temporary. That's, that's how I put them on the sheet, hopefully. All right, I'm attacking. Okay, go ahead. Do it. Commence murder. Curse you! Okay. And that's with this. So far, so good. Okay. Add strength plus proficiency. So the okay. lowest was... The lowest was 21. Okay, well that will hit. Go ahead and make me, uh, make me a damage roll. To kind of punch through the um, the the undulating orifice in the roof. I can't make it any better, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have a sentence coming up in one in, in, in literally after Senathan's turn that is going to be clipped and saved in my online profile forever. So <laughs> enjoy that. All right, uh, ten plus my strength. 13. Okay. All right. So, uh, with so leaping up, you're going to make an attack roll, hit the ceiling and tear open that kind of like undulating um undulating fleshy bit uh and are going to like pull yourself up through it and you'll see that indeed uh it has a bunch of like spider legs that are kind of going along the tunnel kind of like acting as brakes uh as well as what what is equivalent to like you know those stretchy hands you'd get out of vending machines when you were a kid? It's got one of those that's attached to the top of the cave. But it's like in its head. Okay. Do you have a bonus action? Uh, what can clerics do with a bonus action? Not do spiritual some things. Spiritual weapon. Healing words. Healing, yeah, spiritual word. Weapon. Healing word, yeah. What's healing word? <laughs> Right. You don't have Carry prepared on. today. <laughs> Best cleric ever. I just want to say this right off the bat. Best cleric ever. You can use that as a bone. I do have it. Nice. <laughs> isn't that isn't it a bonus? It's a bonus it's action a bonus. ranged heal. Just doesn't do yeah, as much. It, it doesn't as heal much, but it is yeah. nice. That's weak. <laughs> I, I choose to remain the best cleric ever and not cast healing word. You mean 50% of clerics in D&D. Got you. Yes. All right. Unless. Okay. All right. So as you're just kind of holding on, you're going, kind of, you're watching the floors go. All right. Senathan, it's your turn then. What would you like to do? Okay. Uh, so Skelly Man just went through the roof. Skelly Man is like half in, half out of the roof. He's like, his bones are dangling. His bones are dangling. His bones okay. are dangling. Can I see through to the other side? No, it's kind of, it's just big enough for him. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to use the Grim Beard and stab the roof. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Or actually, can I push him up? Yeah, you can totally push him up. Make me an athletics check. Sweet. I'll do that. With advance or my inspiration from Bramble, which was needed, please botch. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not. Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen. Okay. Uh, so suddenly there is going to be a firm <laughs> surface beneath you, Jack, as you are thrust up on top of the mimic elevator. And uh, we'll say that that was um, that would have taken your action to do. Would you? Do you have a bonus action you'd like to use? Yeah. Now that he's not in the way, can I see up there? Hmm. Yes, you can. All right, I use my bonus action and teleport up beside him. Okay. And then I'll reach, try and reach down for anyone who needs help. It's like, okay. quickly! All right, that sounds good. It is the Mimic's turn. The Mimic is going to shriek in terror, and suddenly the floor is going to undulate, and a huge sphincter will open, 
and attempt to shoot is Mana, Bramble, and uh, Luella out to get away from them. So the floor completely dilates into the sphincter and goes... <laughs> so can I please get a deck save from each of you? Are you oh, are no. you telling me we just got pooped? <laughs> it's gurgitating. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gary Khan. This is just how it went. I didn't it's realize that. Right. <laughs> oh my god! Did you actually? Did did somebody just botch? I rolled getting pooped. two. Oh, so on, it's a four. See. You're being excreted. You're being excreted. Uh, I literally have a plus six to this as well as a 1d4 I can use if I fail it. Ah, okay, good. I, I almost rolled a one this time, but it landed on the 19. So I have a 25. A 25? Okay. Uh, so you are going to jump up and grab the edge of that roof? Ah, uh, nice. Um, what did you get, Monica? 17. Oh, 17? Okay, and then you are going to be, you both are going to be able to jump up and grab onto the, the open orifice at the top of the ceiling. Luella, you are going to get, get shot out like, like particularly, like a particularly spicy meal. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. It, it's very I afraid have a newborn. of you. Uh. I have a newborn, so I have a very clear visual of what this is like. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> terrible. No. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <sighs> Your game is disconnected. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're, so they're, they're never gonna let us back. <laughs> no. You know what? We we made we made a splash. No! Right. No! 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 Oh my god. <laughs> okay, Luella, <sighs> you. So it is frightened of you, but it is going yep. to spit you out. We'll say. We'll say it's a. It's a spit. It's a spit. Um, so as it launches you out, uh, it is. Can it do anything else? Uh, disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while it is in line of sight. Cannot move closer to you. That sounds great. It is going to try to protect itself and is going to try to. Oh, the leggy bits on top are going to try to bite Jack. So Jack. Uh, that is going to be a 24 to hit you. Ah! Wow, this thing's tough. Uh, that's going to be 23 points of bludgeoning damage. Ah! And, uh, then, uh, two points of acid damage, because I only rolled ones. Um, pseudopods are going to lash out. One of them is going to try to punch Senathan again. Uh, Senathan, that is going to be a 19. Does that hit you? Did Set it then. Yes. Chris. Yes. All right. Uh, all right. That's going to be 10 points of bludgeoning damage, and you are stuck to the roof of this thing's mouth. Kind right. of. Right. So I'm still Literally, you're on top of the mouth. The from teleporting, so that'll be five. Okay. And another one is the last pseudopod is going to... Uh, is going to try to punch his mana. And he's going to miss. That It's going to go right past you, and you're going to go, hmm. And it's going to just, like, flinch out of the way at the last second. Because you're just you're just too potent. Uh, top of the initiative again, we have Bramble. What do you do? Uh, well, holding on dramatically, we'll say, you think you have something nauseous, or noxious, and uncap a bottle of poison, apply it to a rapier as a bonus action, and stab it. Okay. Poisoner is great. That's great. Go ahead. So the rapier has a... Wait, hang on. Wrong dice. A 21 to hit? 21 to hit is an absolute hit. Uh, and then the damage is 5. <laughs> uh, but the poison damage is 9. Ooh. All right. 14 With the con of save of 14. It does, it does do con save. I think it's got a... Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, how many points was that? That was nine points of poison damage. Yeah, nine points of poison okay, damage. Okay, I just botched my save. So ah. let's say that's let's say that's eighteen. Sure. Instead of fourteen, uh, or the, so it was nine, eighteen, and then that was another four from the stab, so twenty-two total. All right. So <laughs> poisoning your blade, stabbing into the mimic. Uh, are you stabbing its its like stretchy bit, or are you stabbing? Oh, just into the fleshy goo. Okay. 
All right, so the fleshy goo is going to start to boil away as your poison seeps into it, turning the kind of pinky, browny flesh into kind of like a putrid green around where you stab it. Uh, and bits of the roof are going to start peeling away. Oh, this may not have been a good idea. All right, Ismena, what would you like to do? I have a question. Yeah, I have an answer. Are we still falling? You're still moving down at a good clip, yeah. Okay. Um, and is there how much space is there in the elevator shaft? Like, is is does so the about, mimic take up the entire shaft? The mimic, oh, uh, it basically is touching the wall. So, like, um, picture the elevator shaft as like a Pringles can, and you're trying to reach the bottom Pringle. You're the mimic in that situation. Oh, okay. Um, so we don't actually know what happened to Luella. Is that correct? You kind of jumped up and you saw her get out the bottom. So there is like a big hole in the floor right now that's still open. Um, but, and Luella is getting, is being shot faster than the elevator. Oh, okay. Um, hang on just a second. Let me see what I got done. Totally. Actually, I am going to try to jump and grab the wall. Okay, totally. You you can absolutely uh, just make me um, an athletics check to jump up and climb up onto the roof if you want to do that. Okay. Or just, are you just trying to gla grab the like the wall of the elevator shaft? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Twelve. 12. Okay, so jumping forward, um, you are going to take a bit of buffering, but you'll be able to grab a hold of it. So, you're going to take six points of bludgeoning damage just from the velocity of grabbing onto the wall at that speed, and you're going to okay. uh, but you're going to be able to hold on. You have okay. disengaged from the elevator. I have disengaged. Yay! I have disengaged from the elevator. Nice. Uh, okay. Do you have anything? Do you have uh, any bonus actions you'd like to use? Um, I have, I have, yeah, I want to go ahead and try to shoot the crossbolts at the, like, how far up is the attachment? It goes the... all the way to the roof. So it's, it's a cable that's about as, about, I'd say probably about as wide as, like, about three inches of rope. Like, like, like a gym class rope. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to try to shoot the center of the roll. Sounds good. Uh, you'll have disadvantage on the roll, but if you hit, it's going to do something big. Yeah, I, I figured. I'm rolling great. Are you? So, so we'll see. I believe in you. Okay. That was an 18. We you just got to go. Hmm. Okay. So um, would that be strength modifier, right? Uh, if you're use Dex, if you're using your crossbow. Right, Dex, if you're using my crossbow. Thank you. Uh, that would be a thirteen. A uh, thirteen uh, is unfortunately not going to be enough to hit it with just a thirteen. Okay. I'm sorry. That's all right. It happens. I'm it rolling happens. great. It was very close. Um, I think did you, I you didn't have bardic inspiration, right? I did not have Vardic okay. Inspiration. All right, so taking out a shot, you're... You will fire a bolt into... Um, kind of like, it'll glance off. It'll just be like, just a very glancing blow off of this cord. Um, and Luella, it is your turn. You are plummeting with an elevator kind of like... Well, actually, you are plummeting. Is it trying to go up because it's scared of me? The elevator is going to come to a, a screeching halt, actually, mechanically, because it can't come oh, yeah. closer to you because it's afraid of you. Yeah. So it's trying to slow itself down as quickly as possible. Okay. So I have these um, for my other, so my magic item I picked for this was the winged boots, which gives okay. me a fly speed equal to my- When, what uh, is your dark vision? What's your distance? Uh, it should be 60 feet for like uh, normal vision. And then it's like an extra additional 60 feet for like Okay. Sh shadowy. Okay, give, you give think light. you can see the bottom of the shaft at the very edge of your vision. Hmm. 
I see. Well, she's still pretty upset about this whole mimic thing. Um, mm, as, as, as you should be. And so she's going to fly and is going to, because that didn't break her concentration because she didn't take any damage. And mm. uh, is going to actually do the exact same thing again. Is okay. going to fly up and try and, and attack it. Okay. Um, but she's also, but as she does, she's going to like try and, I think she's, so <laughs> she's, a, I, I picked Dampier this time. Mm -hmm. um, so she's got the spider climb, which lets her move up and, and across vertical surfaces and upside down along ceilings while leaving hands free. So yeah. she can just like land on the wall and like run yeah, up to David it and stab. You, you, you can Spider-Man David Bowie your way up it. Yeah, totally. Yeah, basically that's, yeah. That's awesome. So, you were asking where um, the Goblin King is? She's right there. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll. We're gonna attack. Um, Do it. See if this thing is still afraid. Uh, that is it. <laughs> It's afraid. Um, that's another twenty-four to hit. Oh my God, I rolled another Starship 17. Troopers reference in yeah, right. Twenty twenty three. Coming back, guys. Get some Verhoven up in here. Um, <laughs> Amy, why don't you roll this well on our uh, on our channel? Amy is known. I for do being when cursed. I play Luella. Oh, that's remember? right. Luella's Luella's the only character you roll well for. But um, also terribly for saves. Remember. This is true. Because I failed every deck save so far. That's fair. All right, give me damage. Okay. And don't forget your you bonus necrotic. I do. Because it's always because this was cast at a fourth level slot, so it's always a forty-six plus the extra damage dice for being funky necrotic. Uh, do 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 do. Things. Oh. That's another 20 necrotic. Holy I crap. need another um, wisdom save, I think it was. Okay. Wisdom save? What was it? Wisdom, um, save. wisdom save. Uh, it bo actually, you, you don't need it because it botched its original save against you. It is terrified of you. Excellent. And will remain. So you are now a phobia of this mimic. Excellent. And I just healed up. The half of that was 10. So um, she's now back at full health. This went well. Nice. So, we're good. I think that was all I could really do for the moment. All right. All right, so it's going to be your turn flying up Super Luella. You're going to siphon some life out of it. And Jack, you are up on top of the Mimic. What do you do? It's suddenly Everyone... going to... Uh, actually, can I get, at this point, everybody who is on top of the Mimic to make me a strength save? So, you are exempt from this, Ismana, because you're hanging onto the wall above it. Okay, am I hanging onto the bottom of it? As That'll be a collapses? two. Okay. You're going to hang onto the, on the side of it, Bramble? Uh, I think I was sort of inside it, hanging onto the roof. Am I still making the roll? You're still making the roll because it's coming to a sudden stop. Okay, makes sense. This is not a save I'm any good at. <gasps> you I got an 20. at twenty. Okay, Literally, so you're just gonna yeah. you're gonna come to a stop. And you just you have on it from, you're a heron gun, so you have no body weight to yeah. like for inertia. You're just like, eh, that's fine. Um, what what did you get on that, Jack? Seventeen. Okay. All right, so Jack, you're fine. The sudden lurch, the inertia is not going to push you into the floor. Um, you're going to feel it in your knees a bit because you don't have any kneecaps. All of the, ah. you know, all the cartilage is gone. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, um, however, uh, Senathan, you're going to go and just smash to the roof. Uh, you are knocked prone. <laughs> Basically. Uh, Jack, it is your turn. What do you do? Senathan is like smushed up against the top of the roof. And you are... Looking at this. Everyone, this. hold on to grab a hold. And uh, one hand on the uvula. Okay. And with the scythe, just. Okay, make yeah. me an attack roll. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen. Whew. Okay. Roll me damage. Uh, 
Um, six. Nine. Nine? Okay. Um, okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, you are going to, like, grab a hold of it, lean back, take your scythe, and go... <laughs> and there's going to be a moment where you're like, ha What? <laughs> as you start springing back up to the top of the cave without the five, six, you know, thousand pounds of mimic holding this counterweight back. Uh, so you are going to go, what? Um, everyone else, the mimic is lost its point of propulsion and control. It's got its little break arms on the side of the wall. Uh, but I would like a deck save from Bramble, from Senathan, and from Luella. I regret nothing. And uh, I'm gonna say that because you're restrained, <laughs> Senathan, don't you're gonna be rolling at disadvantage. I'm rolling one. I got a six. Twice, twice on deck saves. Okay, I legit have like a reaction for when I fail a deck save. I can roll another one d4 to see if that makes it succeed. I, I don't imagine that applies to a bot. Probably not. Probably not. Is Manny? You're fine. You're just watching this on the side of the wall, like, oh shit. Uh, disadvantage, uh, 15. It's the rabbit that Fif dies. 15? You still managed? Okay. Can Ismena use her reaction to grab one of them? Uh, oh, or is she above us already? She's above. She could make her react. She could use her reaction to try to grab you before you get slingshotted into the cave mouth. <laughs> or you could just, like, you know. Like, you, okay, you could just also, like, do your hair, check your nails, check Twitter. I'm going to ride you know, that. Like, <laughs> I'm seeing where that goes. <laughs> You're just like, go ahead and make me, uh, I want you to do me a favor, and um, you can either make me a deck save or an attack roll just to grab him as he's coming, whichever you prefer. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to try a saving one. Okay. We'll see if that actually does anything, because <laughs> my attack rolls have been like, apparently I need to get my sword sharpened or something. I got... 21. A 21? All right, so he slingshots board the roof, and you're just, you're doing this for the mice more than anything, really. Uh, so you reach out, and you're going to clutch him and slam him into the wall next to you with, with like, a bone-grinding impact. Just, ba -da 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 -da. but you manage to pull him off of that and save him. And meanwhile, you're going to hear, <laughs> splat! That would have been you, above you. Uh, meanwhile, what is going to happen, uh, Senathan, um, you are going to be kind of hurled by the, um, how does this even work? You succeeded your save, but you're restrained. Does restrained even mean you can move at all? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Then I, then actually, wait, I think restrained means that you can't make the deck save in the first place. Oh, no, you just Ooh. have disadvantage. No, you just Which have disadvantage. Yeah. That's weird. Okay, so help me visualize this. Because what's happening to the rest of them is, at this point, Bramble's going to hear tink as the thing loses all of its kinetic, like, its, its hold, and begins plummeting downward against its will. Uh, so Bramble's going to slip and fall inside of the elevator. Uh, the velocity's going to push her against the roof. It's going to smash into Luella, pushing her toward the ground. Uh, and it's going to be falling. Um, now, how do you get out of this with that saving throw? You rolled a disadvantage. You still got a 17. So do you just somehow roll with the motion and get stuck against the wall of the of the shaft? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. So you're just like or gummed just against the I wall. Or we could just I, say I fail. I'm okay I think with that. It's, you know what? You'll take half damage because you're stuck to the roof. Uh, now, excuse me one Sounds moment, good. everybody who's falling. Uh, you are going to fall the remaining 100 feet this round immediately. Uh, so that is going to be, so it was 120 feet to the bottom of the shaft from where the Mimic was. So that is going to be... All right. Uh, Luella, you are going to take 43 points of bludgeoning damage as you are smashed into the rocks by the Mimic's corpse. 
Um, Senathan, you're going to take 21 points of damage as you crash. And uh, Bramble, you are going to take... Did I say 41? You're going to take 82 points of bludgeoning damage from the botch. <laughs> yeah, that's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Does that... Can I, can I do something dramatic? HP including... Uh, so at the moment... Including the temporary hit points, it's 33. So that's more than double. Your is, max? Is, oh, not the max. Max is 51. Well, yeah. So, so wait, so it's, wait. you have to... So it's... If you do more than... Is it more than half or more than your full hit points again? It's more than your full hit points in any one source of damage. Yeah. Okay. So it just bare... It just barely. I, I think I'm just downed, but it's a pretty dramatic down. Um, can I can I do something very yeah, silly on absolutely. the way down? Totally. Because we we're plummeting for a moment here, so we, we definitely have to do one of the r- ridiculously yeah. silly like. <sighs> Fate is but a vicious mistress. I will miss you all, and then toss a rose into the thing and die horribly. It sounds great. The rose will go out of the hole in the roof. As is tradition. <laughs> okay, uh, Luella. Any last words before you hit the ground? Um, mother bleep. <laughs> okay. Mother splutter. <laughs> um, all right. So you'll splat at the bottom of the Mimic Vader. And, uh, Senathan, anything that you'd like to say? Uh, uh, I don't even know why I joined this company. Okay. And with that, there's going to be this catastrophic sp- <laughs> as the Mimic hits the bottom Gr- the bottom of the shaft exploding into all manner of mimic related viscera um you are going to go unconscious Ew. you are going to uh probably go unconscious as well luella That's you have so more gross. are you still up yeah okay. no i am um, i meant that numbers of, of vampiric types brought her back up to full oh nice uh, mm-hmm. all right so at the bottom of the elevator shaft there is just a moment of silence and then and the doors are going to open at the bottom of the shaft. <laughs> Revealing what looks like another office floor. <laughs> and uh, Senathan, it, it's your turn, but I, we're out of initiative at this point. I'm just going to walk out of the mimic elevator and just covered with goo and just... Like, look at my hands and shake. And be like, how do I even get this off? Is everyone okay? Okay. So you're standing there kind of looking. Uh, at the bottom of the pile, you'll see that um, that Bramble is just, like, bent in ways that you should not be bent on the ground. Oh, no, that's my friend. <laughs> it's um, true. Um, I don't think there's anything I can do for Bramble. Um, CPR! Will... Remember work sa- Remember that work class. Alright. Work safety. Work safety. <laughs> we don't have a forklift. And the other class. Luella's going to like pull herself up and like try and get out of there. I'm guessing it's, can, ugh, can like, somebody help? Wiping off goop. All right, so, um, so J- hmm. if you have anything that can heal, so Jack and his mana, you can climb down. The The shaft is pretty rocky on the inside. You can make it down in about 30 seconds. Yeah, if you but, feel more dramatic, accurate pose. <sighs> um, in the meanwhile, <laughs> though, um, Jack, you know that time is of the essence. Your ally is down. Hey, what happened to the rabbit? Oh, I'm stepping in in her. <laughs> Don't get uh, rabbit all over the floor. Or uh, excuse you, my living friends and so dead she, friends. So she's about a hundred you... feet beneath you. A <laughs> hundred feet. Climbing. Yeah, you guys were. Like, yeah, I know it's a lot of feet. That's like a Tarantino movie. Um, so like you're higher up in the shaft. It's about a hundred and twenty foot drop. Oh, screw from... it! I drop and turn into a pile of bones and armor. <laughs> Xylophone noise. I'm coming. <laughs> For and the I homebrew rest. class you were using, does that... Oh, God. You, you can't, I don't think it works that way. I don't care. 
I think one of you fluently hears that. She's gonna like stand out of the way, clear, like fully out of range. All right. Because she doesn't want to get like pumped, like crunked, okay, cranked uh, in the head by Cal, bones. Cal, take 43 points of bludgeoning damage from the fall. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> I had 45. So the Did bones you... reassemble, <laughs> reassemble <laughs> themselves and the armor shifts and the, um, the skull is attached to the, uh, his uh, little crown thing is like riveted to his skull. Probably oh, that's when good. he was alive. Yeah, yeah. So that didn't break. Uh, oh wow, that was really high. My, my <laughs> living and undead friends, I give to you life, and I cast uh, aura of vitality. Okay. Uh, the first target being, um, our poor, uh, gooey bard. All right. Okay. So aura of vitality restores. Man, you okay? Oh, yeah, bleh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Help the bramble scramble. Aura of Vitality. Uh, 30 foot uh, spell, concentration. Uh, everybody uh, in this you, regains 2d6 hit points. Uh, or one, you, you can point one person to gain 2d6 hit points. Yeah, every so, round I can use a bonus action. So if six seconds is a action so basically you can do this 10 times so the first time boo bunny on your feet <gasps> Kaboof. Do, do i have any hit points uh 2d6 one moment who rolls this me yeah sure yeah you can go ahead uh uh seven Seven. So basically, he, let's do this for nice for ease ease of access. So you have nine yeah. more uses of this. Just tell everybody who, like, divide up those nine charges. Okay. It's so like three for Bunny, a couple for Senathan, a couple for you, maybe. There were how many? There you have nine. So eighteen d six has to be in okay. even numbers. I mean, do, do we have time to pause for a moment, take some sort of rest that is short? You can totally take a short rest in the next two, room, yeah. four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Um, I'll take one of those rolls, and everyone else can have two. Okay, so, so everybody roll go two d six for your own healing. It's four forty six if they're getting two charges. Oh, sorry, they roll forty six. I'm rolling two d six. Yeah, everybody go ahead. Do we add roll. anything else to it? No, just two d six, or four d six. Two of my d six are ones. Me too. <gasps> we're cursed. We're cursed. Mm -hmm. All that with the hag. High five for curse buddies. Oh, nice. <laughs> All right. So, um, Ismana, you're going to be able to make your way down to uh, to the ground where everybody is. Um, getting inside of this healing range enough to regenerate some health. Uh, and as the doors are opened here, what you will see is that there is a large hallway on the other side uh, of the elevator. Basically, you're at the at the thin bit of the hallway, uh, which is about, about 150 feet long. Uh, you can see that there is a door immediately on the left that says stairwell. That would have come down here. Um, to the right, you can see that there is um, like what looks like like a, a pamphlet shelf, like "Come visit Mordor" type of pamphlets. Um, there are some potted plants around here. This is basically like a corporate office hallway made out of marble. Um, and over to the left, uh, you are going to see that there is a glass wall looking oh. into what looks like a, an office room, like a like a conference table. Uh, inside of there, where there are a dozen dirty, ragged kobolds having an argument. Immediately across from them, you are going to see that there are a pair of what look like washrooms. Uh, and on the far side uh, of this, opposite the elevator, is an immense, obviously big, dragon-sized door. Also, there are some vending machines by the office room. I could use a snack. 
I do think we I, uh, rest I go for a over moment. to the vending machines to see if there is a potion of healing in the vending machine. There's a potion a potion of healing. Yeah. It's uh let me let me just see how many there are. Let's see how often this has been restocked. Who's who's the manufacturer, like the supplier of this vending machine? Edagon the Wise. Oh really? It's not Glorp Corp? Oh, okay. It's not Glorp Corp. There is a Glorp Corp soda machine. Um, and every button has a needle on it. So that you can pay with suffering. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. We're too self-referential. Um so, uh, there's a Glorp Corp show, soda machine, uh, and yes, there is a vending machine that has, like, uh, for their randomized prices, so for uh, a healing potion is 100 gold pieces, a deck of many things is 200 gold pieces, there's a little warning label on it, like a cigarette pack, though, that says, warning, uh -huh. a deck of many things may be bad for your health. <laughs> Can I... Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, I pick up the vending machine and tip it over. Okay, make me a, make me a strength check. I can help. I would oh. like to stand very far clear. I don't want to be squished by a vending machine. Well, if Smina is uh, trying to tip it over, I'm going to try and use maid hand to get into the vending machine and pick things out and bring them out to us. You know what? While this is happening, can I do something equally as nonsensical? I would yes. like to cast Tiny Hut and go have a little rest in my tiny okay. hut. So a tiny hut will go... <laughs> it's like a 10 feet cube. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Will will appear in the center of uh, the center of the hallway. Uh, all right. So uh, first off, make me a sleight of hand check. Chris, is Mana, what'd you get on your strength check? I did not make the check yet because Let's do it. I was waiting for Senathan. If you're kind of shaking it and that. So I'll shaking, say... If, shaking, rattling. 20. So I'll 30. say that gives him advantage on his pilfer check. Awesome. All right, what are we going for? Everything? Everything. Awesome. So with advantage, uh, that will be a 25. Okay, so I'm going to say that with that, you can pilfer. Uh, you can pilfer three potions out of there. Potions of moderate healing. All right. Who Without setting some... off the, the machine's alarm. Luella. Um, so we mentioned taking a short rest. If we're doing that, I would like to spend some hit dice to regain some hit points. Okay. You could totally crawl into the hut. I will do so. Yeah. Technically there's room for nine medium sized creatures. Into, into the hut, everyone. And it is invi inviolable. Inviolable? It is not able to be violated by outside people if you don't want them to. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. I had a party escape a dragon with one of those. Oh, I'll, wow. Uh, Actually, that would be a really good maneuver. I'll give two oh, of the, the dragon stayed to, outside for six um, hours. I'll give two yeah, of the wait. potions to Ismina, and I'll keep one for myself. Okay. You can keep trying to loot this thing randomly if you want. Yes. How does he, uh, using the hit dice to heal yourself in you, here work? So you roll your hit dice, and you add your constitution modifier to each. You can use as many as your level. Okay, so go ahead and make me another sleight of hand check while Ismena is shaking the machine. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna pull out the uh, the menagerie of magic for this one. Twenty-seven. Uh, you got that even higher this time. I got plus ten. I rolled a fifteen last time. Okay, you're going to get four items. Uh, here's the deal. I want you to roll me percentiles four times. Okay. Anybody else want to roll them or just so keep everyone involved? It's Mina, you're helping. Sure, I can roll. You roll two, I roll two? I'll roll two percentiles. All right, I got 51 and 90. 51 and 90. Sounds good. Do you get the constitution modifier to each each time die rolled? Oh. 22 nice. and 54. 22 and 54. Okay, so let's go through it. Um, so 22, 54. Chris, what'd you roll? Uh, 51 and 90. Okay, so... And you rolled real well. Uh, so 
We'll go, I'll go up the list. So Ismena, you are going to reach in and feel that there is a, a cylinder there that you're going to pull out. It is a potion. And on it, you can see there's a little cartoon dragon with like breathing fire. You have a potion of fire breath. Looking I can guarantee you I will use this. Possibly within the next five minutes. Okay, the next thing that you are going to reach in and grab is... It's 54. Uh, you are... Oh my god. Uh, you'll pull out another potion, and it, instead of a dragon on this one, it is like this swirling green concoction, and on it you can see that there is like... this picturesque beautiful kind of very like kind of Austrian looking guy on it flexing and it's a potion of storm giant strength just him going <laughs> in animated all right looking through yours Chris you are going to uh, Senathan is going to grab a 90 uh you're gonna reach in, you're like, I got something, and you're gonna pop out, and there's like a little bead in your hand with a little tag. It's like inside of like a like a little clear container that says bead of force. One's all you need. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Uh and six is gonna put you on this table. And <laughs> reaching in you're gonna you're gonna go and like you're still covered in mimic gunk you're still like sticky and as you reach in you're gonna go and pull out a bottle of universal solvent <laughs> now you have it <laughs> universal solvent Great. awesome <laughs> uh and at that point a little voice is gonna come out of the uh, never mind. The security system botched. So this, the, the the vending machine does not say to buy something. So, uh, in that case, you just you loot it, and um, you have looted it uh, pretty well, uh, except for that 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 deck of many things that's on the top shelf and doesn't seem to be moving. Darn. Yeah, that that would take some definite work. Um, you guys want to rest up a bit? I think so, okay. at this point, yeah. Yeah, I think a, a rest that is mechanically short. Sounds anybody good. Else have, anybody else have goop on them? I mean, I've got guts. Are yeah, they I sticky believe guts? I was primarily only Kinda. sloshed in terrifying acid. Th this will help. Okay. Thanks. Use the universal solvent on everyone who has mimic guts on them. Good use of universal solvent. You Meanwhile. Mimic guts. Inside of that little office room, you're going to keep hearing. All in favor? Denied. Uh, request a five minute recess. Confirmed. All in favor? Agreed. And then these kobolds, they're basically in these torn tunics, like torn white tunics with like pockets and like a bunch of quills sticking out are going to, like, kind of walk out into the hallway and go, oh, can you believe that guy? What the... I know, right? They're just awful. It's terrible. They're going to look at your tiny hut, look at you guys shaking the vending machine. Huh. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go over to the Glorp Corp machine and start, like, buying some coffee and sodas. Mondays, am I right? Are you guys new here? Yes. Yeah, we're contractors. First day. Oh. First day. We're well, contractors, huh? Yeah. We've been here our entire lives. How's that working for you? Not well. We, um... We're the committee to, wait, to wake Argo Snacks. But unfortunately, the chair of the committee died, and we've been trying to elect a new chair so that we can adjourn the meeting and wake him up. Well, you're unlocked because huh. that's what we're here for. Oh. We'll have to ask the chair whether or not we can let you in. You don't have a chair. I know. We've been trying to elect one for three generations. So we're the chair. 
That's why we were sent. We're the contractors. <clears throat> make me a make me a deception roll. <laughs> Luella, you were gonna say something? No, Luella, like she's gonna pause and kind of like is trying to just yeah, give this same. like general vibe of like, yeah, no, this is like she's yeah, this is genuine. This is true. Can I can I help out by using minor illusion and holding up a scroll in Draconic towards them in the fancy writing that we saw on the um, um, or on the oh, elevator for Argo Snacks, like with its, his signature yeah. Yeah, you can. on it saying like that uh, uh, Ismela is the new chair. Okay, Ismela. In case of emergency and is, three is generations Mayna? of kobolds. You can roll with advantage then. Like, oh yeah, my, see? this is going to go great. And I do speak Draconic, so I can do it in that language. Okay. Ooh, Dirty 20. Dirty 20? Okay. Uh, the um, the first tief or the first tiefling, uh, the first kobold is going to look you up and down. Huh. Well, you're a weird looking kobold, but who am I to judge? You've got wings, and that's, or we got a tail, that's all that matters to me. I hear there are some dragon things, like dragonborns, that don't even have tails. <gasps> I, the Can you horror. imagine not having a tail? Terrible. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, hey, guys, the chair's here. Do we vote? We don't have to. She's got a sign to it. Wow. Is it notarized? What? Why would I be talking to you if it wasn't notarized? <laughs> See what I have to deal with? <laughs> Unbelievable. Right? Well, good thing it's Ismila's job to deal with it now. Yeah. Right. Um, mm. I'll get you the key. Well, only, only temporarily, though, and to appoint a permanent chair, right? Eventually, so, but we do need to do an inspection. An, an inspection? We'll have to get housekeeping down here. I hear the elevator's been made a mess of. Yeah. I think that was a lot. The elevator has a lot of uh, OSHA violations. Oh, sure. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Uh, a moment later, the um, the kobolds will reassemble. They'll have a little huddle, and then will reach under their table and will pull out a key that is roughly the size of, I guess, a coffin. Like, if we're being honest, it's about a six foot long key, and the twelve of them are gonna go up, 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 bring it out, and go boom, and just drop it on the ground next to his mana. There you go. Thanks. How about, how about I give you the afternoon off? Really? Uh, hmm? Luella? Is this your second Perhaps. time? No, no, she's not my secretary. Is he she's your secretary? my supervisor. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Sir? Perhaps you could assist us in getting this key to where it needs to go. Oh. You mean in the big hole? Yeah, we don't, exactly. We don't need to worry about that. Uh, okay, sure. We'll, we'll help you open it. Um, Hold on. All right, guys. Ready? One, two. Yeah. They're going to shoulder it and start walking over to the door. We just got to line it up. We just got to line it up. So this, is, this door is tremendous. It's dragon sized. A little short for a dragon, to be honest. It's definitely like the dragon has to duck a bit if, if it uses this door. Uh, and there is a keyhole right in the center where the door will split. And the, the kobolds line up the key and they're like, all right, ready? One, two, like a battering ram, three. And they push into the door and are going to manage to hit directly in the center of the hole. And as they do, you're going to hear as the door opens about a foot from the pressure. Huh. Must have forgotten to lock it. What do you know? Three generations wasted on an open door. Huh. That's, why we're here. <laughs> That's why we're here. I'm, I'm sure you all had rich and fulfilling lives outside of the meeting room. Right? I fed my grandpa to the elevator. I'm sure that took a lot of courage. Now, um... <laughs> so, you, would you care to explain why the door was left unlocked for three generations? 
Um. Uh. No. <laughs> Please explain anyway. I guess someone forgot to lock it, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Sir? Your, your, your malevolence? Oh, I like that one. Um. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Right. Um. You're all fired. Aww. I guess I could always go back to teaching. <laughs> what did you teach if you've been here for three generations? And, um, <clears throat> Jack's bones roll across the, the ground with kung 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 with all of his plate, rusty plate mail as the mice are, like, chasing after them. And it, like, reassembles after his his nap, and he's like, ah, after 10,000 years, I'm free. Wait. Been no, right, less right. Than 10 I'm, minutes. It's been 10 minutes. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes. Hey, you're looking for employment? Uh, yeah. The kobold's going to say, kind of brushing some of its scales back. Do I fifth. have a deal for you? Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to step back a little. <laughs> You know what? This is not my problem. Will's gonna start heading towards the open door and he's just gonna leave this. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, what's the deal, sir? Um, and as the the others go through and like the door like half closes, it kind of does like a, a swinging, like it's, a, it's on a yeah, hinge. Yeah, it's, it's it's really big, so it's really noisy when it does. <laughs> And one, it just shows him like shaking their hands, and the next scene, you just see him with his scythe. And the next scene, he's he's catching up to the group with a bunch of cobalt skeletons walking around, yeah, cleaning up the joint. Okay, that works for me. All right. Uh, so, as you head through the door, you will find yourself in a very warm area. You're in the inside of an immense geodome underneath the earth. The inside of this cavern is hollow, and you are walking on a bridge. This bridge spans about 400 feet with lava on either side, down a couple hundred feet, feet down, kind of a big pool. Think supervillain lair, where there's like this bridge connecting it, and in the center of the bridge is a huge circular chamber with a flowing waterfall that is just kind of coming down out of clouds above it. It's this majestic spa in the center of this bridge big enough for a dragon to curl up in pretty tight kind of like like when anybody in north america is in their bathtub you know nobody's had it. nobody has a good bathtub at least not unless they well i don't have a good bathtub there i'm just out of my bathroom uh so uh as you are in there um you are going to see that also the 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 spa area is decorated with several with several statues making faces like terror, confusion, and so on. And as you approach, uh, I'm just going to put on the only song that I have on here, so that's going to be a karimba. A little bit of music is playing out of a magic mouth, and you can hear humming coming from the center pool. The steam is very hard to see through, but if anybody wants to try to see what the figure looks like, uh, you can make me a perception roll. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I rolled a net. I rolled a one. Okay. 18. Okay. And 23. 23. 13. 13. Six. Six. So, Ismana. As you are looking forward, you and um, you and Luella and um, uh, Jack are going to see what looks like you think it might be a giant inside of there, but a giant a, a giant woman with like long flowing hair, kind of enjoying a nice sumptuous spa day. Uh, the other two of you are going to look through the haze and you're going to see that the hair, these long, lanky, these long, thick locks that maybe they're even dreadlocks, uh, but they're very, very thick chunks are kind of moving around independently of themselves and kind of just kind of warping around doing a thing. And um, you don't see any 
form of a body beneath the water. Just the head kind of floating in the in the pool. <sighs> Gonna do a little bit of a stage whisper. So, uh, Gorgons? Oh, and then, um... Beholder? I grab my shield. Mm -hmm. Okay. Grab Jack shield. rolled a nat one, so his head is on backwards. <laughs> for his so perception. Jack, you're gonna, you're, yeah, your your head is on backwards. Uh, ah. You are going to, with a nat one, you're gonna turn and bump into one of the statues. All right. And it's going to go teeter, 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 teeter. Can you make me a deck save to not have the statue hit the ground? What could go wrong? Three. Okay, the statue's going to go boom, and the head's <laughs> going to fall off the statue and roll over by Ismana's feet. Ismana, you are going to recognize the face of Lovik, the contractor uh -oh. who came here 25 years ago. You've seen his. You've seen his portrait. Have you seen oh, this uh, man? Or your Lorik? I knew him well. Um, <laughs> What was, please remind me, was it Ginger Snaps, Ginger Snacks? What was the name of the dragon again? Uh, Party Argo Snacks. Argo Snacks. Snacks. <laughs> Argo, Snacks. <laughs> Argo Snacks. Okay. So Arthur I, Snacks? I grab the shield up like this and I shout in a loud voice, Argo Snacks, are you awake? Uh, make, me an in, make me an intimidation roll. Oh, I have that. Good. I, I'm excited. Here comes the nat 20. 18. 18? Um, you're going to hear, Whoa! come from the the, uh, the pool. Who's there? Who's there? I'm in, I'm in my bathing clothes. Uh, okay. Terrible decision here. Um, <laughs> Bramble would like to use minor illusion to illusion that her eyes are open uh, and look in that direction <laughs> with closed eyes uh, and say, my, my darling lady, we are but simple delivery individuals. We will be on our way. Uh, uh, if you're looking with for Argo smile Snacks, on her face. He, he, he's on the other side of, of the bridge. Just don't hurt me. We, we would never. That would be unprofessional. Such a charming being as yourself. We could never deign to harm. You think Who I'm are you charming? talking to? Uh, Deeply charming, of course. I can uh, sense the charm in your presence. Now we'll, we'll talk on our way back. Oh, that would Enjoy be Enjoy your spa day. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm very shy. That That's okay, that's okay. Shyness can be a virtue. Mm -hmm. Luella's uh, giving you this look of like, I can't when? tell my eyes are closed. There, there will be a sudden gust of <laughs> oh, yeah. gust of subterranean wind somehow. There will be sudden change in air pressure as the door behind you finally shuts completely, we'll say. Uh, and some of the steam will blow away and you'll see that there's a very bashful looking pink fleshed beholder that is kind of crouching in the water, averting its no, eyes I... and trying to cover itself. Well, no, I'm, Bramble doesn't see this. <laughs> oh yeah, Bramble doesn't see shit. Um, I don't see nothing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to just sneak past, like, you can. Yes, Is anybody win. taking a nice long look at the beholder, though? No. No. Its eyes are watching you. At least two of them. <gasps> okay. I think I'm going to cast invisibility and move across the bridge. Okay. Sounds good. If all of you are headed that way, the music will continue playing. And after you reach the other side of the bridge and begin kind of like trailing off toward the final door here, um, the music will begin playing and you'll start hearing like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at least this one didn't sneak up on you while you were in the tub this time. Those last ones are real brute. <laughs> <sighs> but you deserve a day like this, Dennis. You've been working really hard. Yeah. yeah, Dennis the Beholder has been working very hard. Uh, 
So with that, you are going to reach the other side and there is one final immense door that is encased with gems, rubies, and sapphires, pearls in, well, pearls aren't gemmed, but they're also like inlaid all along the golden door. And there is a little like ring bell to open next to it. So now then. Yeah? Wait, where, where are you? Before we do that. I'm right I here. Would... I would like to we can call steal perception on the door. Please, please do. Sorry. I just want to make sure the door isn't alive. <laughs> that sounds great. Sounds like a good yeah. idea. Don't be a mimic. Don't be a mimic. 13. 13? It doesn't look... It doesn't... You don't believe the door is alive. Nor is the bell alive. Although that would be pretty insidious, because you have to reach out and touch it. That's something you'd say when we look for a mimic, though. Mm -hmm. I ring the bell. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, the bell goes jangle, jangle, jangle. And the door in front of you will open. Oh. Inside, you will see an immense dragon <gasps> lying atop a horde. For a moment, as you look at the dragon, you think that it is just a pile of impossibly valuable gemstones. And then you see its mass undulate. This mountain of rubies and sapphires just... It lies on more gold and treasure than you could ever see in a dozen lifetimes. I look mm -hmm. at Senathan and I'm like, nope. No. Nope. I'm, I'm going to can... elbow Jack. Nope. So you, you, you sure you don't want to hook up with one of these dragons? Nope. I mean, like... Nope. Hmm. Ancient don't ways. Classy <laughs> treasure. Okay. Um, mm. About the letter, the, the scroll... What did we say the conditions of opening were? Did we just have to be in the presence or did they have to be awake? Can we just open it now and we then should go? just hand the scroll to them. We just do our delivery and leave. I, I, I think we can open it, but... <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Oh, no. Hello. You will hear an eye the size of a carriage will open in front of you and you will hear a voice echo throughout the room. Who goes there? Hi, we're, we're, we're with, with um, UMP Delivery. Oh, who's parcel. this? I got a parcel. Parcel. <laughs> if, if you could just oh. sign, if you could just sign right here. Oh, I've been sleeping for so long. It's, it sounds like Eric Idle in my head, but um, <laughs> I've been sleeping for so long. What what day is it? Uh, it's the Age of Sorrows. Age of Sorrows. I know, no, I missed the whole age. Wasn't it the age of... Balls, I missed starts, brunch. It starts with an F. We're in Sorry. six... We're in, it's the age of farce. The age oh, of yeah, farce. Yeah. There age we farce. go, there we go. Sorry, we're, we're not number people. What a stupid people. name that is. Who came up... Who came up with nah. that? Managing. Yeah, that's a I, I, I fell asleep. I, I fell asleep in the age of the Inquisition, 491. Now hey. Who's mentally trying to figure Inquisition. out if she knows when the hell that is? I so died in the calendars. Age of Inquisition. Oh, oh did you? <laughs> yeah. Did you know Bill? The second in Inquisition? Or the first? Well, I mean, I, the second, Bill the Inquisitor was in both of them, though. Ah. Yes, you know I, I got better. What you got for me? Read it. Ah. Uh, crack. <laughs> All right. What, what's worth waking me up, then? What's this, then? Uh, and Cal, do me a favor. I have sent you the text in our Zoom chat. Do, do, do. So, psh, cracking the seal, it goes oh, and unfurls in your hand, ready to be read. What a. Well, since I'm still invisible, look over her shoulder. Uh, one second here. It's in a. Where is this? <laughs> I sent it in the Zoom. Oh, sorry. Boop. There it is. I didn't hit send. <gasps> ah. So Cal, cracking it open. Jack reads. Uh, one second, where are my glasses? <laughs> A little mouse will put them on the tip of your nose. Are you shitting? 
Don't he read did. it. Who's, whose nose is that? So <laughs> there's a there's a rat for his nose, and uh, it's just holding the glasses up in front of his <laughs> the blackness of the skull. Oh Dear my. Argo Snacks, the avaricious. We've been trying to reach you concerning your lair's extended warranty. You should have received a notice in the mail about your lair's extended warranty. Uh, eligib eligibility. Since we've gotten a response, we're giving you a final courtesy courier before we close your file. To speak to someone about possibly extending or reinstating your lair's warranty, Please use the attached scroll to speak with a warranty specialist. To be placed on our no call list, write a two on the attached scroll or eat the couriers. Well, <laughs> our job here is done. Son of a... <laughs> and I think that is where we're going to call game for today. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it 100%. I knew where this was going. We we don't know what Argo Snacks reaction is going to be. You're just going to leave us hanging? Uh All right, we can epilogue it. Um Okay, hold on. Let me see how hungry he is. Does he need an extended layer warranty? I mean, we did just we did just break the elevator. Like maybe we're Maybe we're an example for extending the warranty. Well. Hmm. I mean, I think that's fine, so long as nothing happened to my kobolds. Yes, they're right out. Remember how they're all out here, everyone else? Let's go get them, everyone that remembers the alive kobolds. Yeah, we'll be right back. We're going to go get them. They're, they're excited to see you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I think you guys running away from the door as it shuts is a good place to call it. All right. Um, so, so yeah, you running away is like, well, they seem nice. <laughs> That's the sleepy mm -hmm. Eric Idle Dragon wakes up and puts Arcane on his espresso machine for his morning coffee and calls... All right, because we uh, we got about five more minutes left on this slot. So, folks, I hope you enjoyed that game. Players, did you enjoy just kind of goofing around, playing some some really ridiculous yeah, D and D? That was fun. Yes. It's it's good having some ridiculous stuff. Right, I Every bet. After while. being a <laughs> being a new dad, you must be exhausted. Uh, Monica, well, it was wonderful so to have you yeah. on board and to have your Thank your you your much. Geralt adjacent. <laughs> not Witcher with us. Mm -hmm. loved, so I loved your uh, like the way you were kind of egging us on, like in our like Zoom chat to, to just kind of like, yeah, let's just make this weirder and do it. It's like this is a bad idea. Let's do it. <laughs> it, was, it was fantastic. Yes, nice. I hope we all can toast to bad decisions at some point. I'll drink to that. Cheers. Cheers. Bad decisions. <laughs> All right, so why don't we go ahead and go in reverse order and say uh, who we are, where you can find us, and uh, some some outros. Uh, Monica, do you mind starting us off? Sure thing. My name is Monica Valencinelli, and I played Ismena, a tiefling blood hunter who was very much uh, the Witcher adjacent. And you can find me at booksofm.com um, and booksofm on all my handles. Thanks. Thanks for playing. Uh, over to Cal. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Cal, and I played Jack Merrow, the uh, skeleton uh, cleric of Cressius. Um, know more about that? You can ask these dorks, because uh, it's their one of their homebrew gods. Yeah, and a nice lich god. I I immediately <laughs> liked him as soon as I pulled that that list up. Um, yeah, uh, I go on Neo Cal in the chat and NeoCal on Twitter. And uh, when I'm not um, in the Dragonlance campaign with uh, Kelly and Chris on Dork Tales, uh, I am doing podcasting. So if you liked the 90s animated shows Reboot or Beast Wars uh, or Beasties, as it was called in Canada, or That's just so um, 
it is weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, then, uh, yeah, you can find me on YouTube or anywhere there are podcasts. Uh, Laser Comb Productions are the slew of podcasts. But yeah, that's uh, that's what I get up to. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And it was nice. Uh, I know everyone here, but it was very nice meeting you, Monica. All right. Over to Millie. Sure. Hi, I'm Millie and or Bunny Hearted. I was playing the first fifth edition bard I've ever played, actually, Bramble Nightshade. Um, I have played a Pathfinder bard so many times and I realized I hadn't actually ever played a D&D one. I actually I, I might have to do this for a future game. Bard is kind of cool. I love the the utility and the mayhem and the having no hit points and dying horribly. That was fantastic. Big fan of myself. Um, when I'm not on Dark Tales, you can find me over at Twitch.tv slash Bunny Hearted, where I am a cozy comfy trans and retro styled bunny VTuber. Uh, do my best to build sort of warm, uh, cozy, welcoming, and inclusive spaces and communities. Uh, I really loved being over here. This was a lot of fun. And I love you a lot. Yeah. We love you too. Um, I Chris. love your face. I love your VTube face. No. Hi, uh, I'm Chris. Uh, I go by Diggy Blog in the chat and on the Dork Tales Discord. Um, you can find me uh, pretty much just on, on Dork Tales doing stuff uh, between being a uh, a new father, which has been exciting and really, really tiring, though I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, um, we'll be actually finishing up Call of the Nether Deep this weekend, which yep. is super exciting. Uh, and I believe there's a charity uh, game tomorrow. Uh, for um, that we're doing on our channel, but it would be great to to have you uh, come over, visit us, and uh, we have this wonderful thing on our channel called Hurt Them More that you can buy with channel points, which gives Kelly ways to uh, mess us up when we're doing really well, which this game, you know, we, we were rolling pretty low, uh, but uh, it just makes things more interesting, so come on by, uh, check us out, and uh, um, get us some Hurt Them Mores. <laughs> That's fair. All right, Amy. Hi, I am Amy. I was playing Luella von Zarevich, my uh, Dempier warlock uh, with a daughter of Strahd von Zarevich. And <laughs> uh, yeah, you can find me in uh, on Twitch at uh, Paradoxical Ghoul and on our the Dork Tales Discord and regularly on Dork Tales playing a number of different characters doing all sorts of things. So uh, yeah, it'll be great to see you folks around. Be great to see you. Uh, and finally, I have had the pleasure of being your dungeon master. I'm Kelly. I'm the host over at twitch.tv and youtube.com slash dorktales, uh, where we do a whole host of games, everything from D&D &D to basically anything that we feel like. Um, come join us. We tell some great stories, and we would love to have you on board with us. Personally, you can also find uh, my work over on uh, some of Onyx Path's products. You can also find me on the Storyteller's Vault in a number of Chronicles of Darkness things, and uh, soon to other platforms by drive-thru rpg as well uh it has been a pleasure to be here for you thank you gary Khan, for having us here and uh with this we're we're one minute over so let's let's pass it over to i think the australians are, are next but whoever it is have a fantastic gary Khan, and thank you so much bye everybody mm -hmm. bye everyone